special pick and raise your voice. Sing, sing, sing with me. Down and down into the deep. Who knows what we'll find beneath? Diamonds, rubies, gold and more. Hidden in the mountain store. Born underground, suffered from a teeth of snow. Raised in the dark, the safety of a mountain home. Skin made of iron, still in a boat. To dig a dig makes us free. Come on, brother, sing with me. I am a dwarf and I'm digging a horn. Diggy, diggy horn. Diggy, diggy horn. I am a dwarf and I'm digging a horn. Diggy, diggy horn. Digging a horn. The sunlight will not reach too slow. Seen the blue moon glow so Fill a glass and down some meat Stop your bellies at the feet Stumble home and fall asleep Dreaming in our mountain deep Born underground Grown inside a rocky womb The earth is our cradle The mountain shall become our tomb Face us on the battlefield You will meet your doom We do not fear what lies beneath We can never live The wild polio virus remains endemic in only three countries. In Nigeria, Rotary and its partners have made big gains despite insecurity in the northeast. We have teams that are standing by and they will be mobilized to go into those areas and immunize all children below the age of five and get out. We are optimistic that uh, by the end of this year we should see our last case and we're working towards that. In Afghanistan, the partners are holding the line against local cases. The small increase is the result of refugees fleeing Pakistan. Afghanistan is in a strong position to eradicate polio. The majority of the cases in the country, they are like imported. There are matches with the cases in, in Pakistan. Across the border, in Pakistan, militants have killed vaccinators and banned immunization in some areas. This has caused a spike in polio cases. North Waziristan was under the control of Taliban's. We had 300,000 children trapped there. So this year, if you see in the six months, the cases which have come out are all from North Waziristan or the surrounding areas in KPK. In June, Pakistan began an offensive to retake the contested areas. 
now we have got an opportunity to give the polio drops to those children who did not get for three and a half years. Despite the dangers in all three countries, the vaccination teams are unstoppable. When you visit the vaccinators who are working in very difficult circumstances, you would salute them. They are the real heroes of the program. The vaccinators who have lost a sister or a brother, they want to continue with the mission because they say that my brother who died has left a mission incomplete. In Nigeria, Afghanistan and Pakistan, Rotary and its partners are keeping their promise to eradicate polio. I'm 100 percent sure that uh, uh, we could win this battle. We have the will, the desire, our government is committed. We will overcome these problems and we will eradicate polio from Pakistan. This is the greatest you know, public-private partnership project ever. So much sacrifice has been made right from the beginning to get to this point. And we need to ensure that we get the rest of the job done. Kids, yo, listen up. If you're looking for a gift, son, you're in luck. What's up, man? Free money. Horny, too. Have films, one scenes, rapid shit for you. Rhymes go bang, dropping gifts, any weather. Blowing up treats like beds in the nether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta move, cause I spend it all on paper. Well, that's us done. We'll see you later. The Santa Claus. This is zombie pig man. Promise. We'll make a bottle out of obsidian. Sad name. 
passion though And there's no chance they will see any snow Superman, maybe Spider-Man, or Wonder Woman, maybe Iron Man, but no way Aquaman can. Santa Claus, busy zombie pig man, kids in the never in Minecraft, at Christmas time. If he can't do it, then it's up to you and I. Santa Claus, busy zombie pig man, kids in the never in Minecraft, at Christmas time. My name's Lee. I've got spinal muscular atrophy, which is very much like muscular dystrophy. I've played games all my life, basically. It's just something that I've always enjoyed. And I got quite depressed when I finally couldn't play them. Because um, it was taking a big part of who I was away. I've had quite a few visits, to be honest. And each time we've tried something different and the the Xbox was the perfect solution. I have um, micro light switches and then I have the analog sticks on an arm and I use my chin to operate them. With games, I can do the things that I can't do because of my disability. For instance, I love football. I can play football with my brother and um, play in FIFA. I can play racing games and drive cars, which again I can't do. The original aim I had for myself in Target was to be able to play GTA 5 when it came out. And uh, to be honest, I didn't think I'd be able to play because of my limitations. But with the work that we've done, there are no limitations anymore. I can actually play the games, I can enjoy them. Uh, I've actually finished Grand Theft Auto 5. I'd just like to say that if you're thinking about contacting the charity, I wouldn't think twice about doing so. If you're at a point in your life where games are limited through your disability, then this is the charity that could help change it and help change your life and bring something back that you thought you'd lost. And because disabilities are very frustrating and limited, you're basically in prison. And if you can get just one part of your normal life back and that escape isn't the, the, the brain, then I wouldn't think twice about contacting. They're very helpful. The ideas that they've got and the way around things, it, it's absolutely fantastic. Just 
People are sort of used to us because the thing is, because the game will be in the middle of the screen. Mm -hmm. If we're looking up there, it looks like we're looking at the game, and so it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's set up in quite a nice way. Mm -hmm. Of course, we've got a green screen here, so it's a good thing you didn't wear a green jumper. I think today. Oh my god! Because otherwise, you'd be invisible. <laughs> because the green screen gets rid of all the green. You I see. see. Oh. Um, something, something magical is happening. We're 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 live now. I think. Are we live? Yeah. So. Um, I just took a picture. Good. Of ourselves. So this is the chat up here. You can, you can read the chat. So this is what everyone's saying. Look, ah, oh, Lewis's dad. Oh my God. He's adorable. Oh. Oh, Mr. Bringley. I can't see spelling it. Spelling it wrong. You haven't got your glasses. That's all right. OMG. Oh, he is. He, I am dead of cute. I can see the resemblance. Can people see the resemblance? <laughs> oh my God. Have we got oh, any of those yeah. moustaches from yeah, yesterday? Yeah. Mm, well, Lewis had one last night. I need a grey moustache. That's what I need. Yeah, you do, Lewis. God, I was still tweeting that we're going live. That's all right. So uh, that's you there. Can you see yourself at the top, Dad, with that lovely, I can, lovely yes, with the orange tie. Mm. And uh, that's 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 definitely what you look like usually. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't uh, put a tie on. It's, it's 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 the light is making you look a bit pale today and a bit, is, a bit yeah. sort of mm. a bit sort of wan. But you've had a long day. Thank you for coming down. That's all right. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here. Looking forward to seeing you and doing whatever we're going to be doing. That's right. We're we're basically going to be playing uh, like adventure story book game thing, and I'm just going to take you around the world, and you can um, you can you can just play along. It'll be fine. All right, okay. How you doing, Simon? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I tweeted that we're we're going live. That we are live. We were going to um, make a video, but we forgot. 
can be asked in the end. <laughs> I did the, the radio edit for the Rude song. Oh, did you? we're doing for Christmas. Okay, not, the one, not the one that is available now. With All proceeds go to charity mm -hmm. that's on the YouTubes, on the Oxcast now. You can buy it on the band camps. So, uh, it's good. <laughs> that's so why we're streaming, We're streaming Lewis, this year charity. for charity. Uh, the charities we've got are Médecins Sans Frontières, yeah. Do you know who they are? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Flora and Fauna International. Do you know what they are? Yeah. They do. They do. They do stuff for uh, animals. Yeah. They're really good. Uh, special Effect, who do, um, uh, who who help people, millions of people. Um, well, not millions, but lots of people. Um, so kids, like disabled people gamers, disabilities, play games. And which charity uh, do you work with, Dad, or at least have a knowledge of? And Polio Now. And Polio a, Now! Which now! Is, <laughs> which is a part of Rotary. Yes, that's right. <laughs> um, so, thank you for coming down. Um, I'm not going to make you talk about it. Um, oh dear. But you can if you want. So you're, 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 a, you're a Rotarian, are some, you? At some point, yes. Yes, I am a Rotarian. A rotund Rotarian. That's a bit rude. No, I'm not quite rotund. Not as rotund as some people. In Rotary. In Rotary, yeah. yeah. Well, so what? your Rotary Club is, is from our local town, at home. At home, Chipping Onga, Essex. Yeah. yeah, mistakenly, Rotary Today, the official magazine or newsletter or paper of the Rotary Society, which is international, uh, said that you were in the wrong club. They said you well, were in the Chelmsford that, Club. Yes, yes, yes. Someone made a big slip up there. What a boo-boo. What a, what a boo-boo. Yeah, who did that? It wasn't me. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> I don't produce the newsletter for the Rotary Club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, Simon. <laughs> That's all right. Well, these errors do arise. In yeah. the normal course of life, things yeah. happen. Have you made any errors, do you think? Me? Lots yeah. of errors. Oh, OK. Mm. Well, he's here now, isn't he? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and so are you. <gasps> Oh, oh my, my God! I was oh, planned, I right, Dad? I was, I was planned. You were planned. Gosh, there we planned. go. Lewis was planned, planned, everyone. Planned. Official. Official. Yeah. Back in 1983. 1983. Mm. What was life like? So then? everyone knows how old you are now, don't they? Well, of course, our audience watching. Mm -hmm. Half of them wouldn't have even like heard of 1983 before. No, they wouldn't. Which mean they wouldn't have heard of 1983? No. They would think it was the prequel for 1984. They were all born. <laughs> <laughs> They had to study that in school. Yeah. Well, it wasn't like that in 1984, was it? No. Well, no. no. What was it like in the 80s, Dad? Uh, different. Oh, God, it was great. The 80s it was, was different. Wonderful. Very different. Yes, yes, I mean... It was I, safe uh, to play in the streets. I, I, computers were really still in their infancy. Mm -hmm. ZX Spectrums. Did you have a ZX Spectrum? Commodore 64? Yeah, I remember those. Well, you had one, didn't you? Well, I used yours. It wasn't really mine. Oh, well, was it back okay. when I was like five? Well, I think you used it. You probably knew more about it than I did. Well, I think that was the way, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, that's what happens. Yeah. And kids used to know how to program the VHS. What is it now? What do kids know how to use now? The iPads, and their iPads, parents don't know how to use yeah. those, maybe. iPhones, oh, a whole lot. Yeah. What is it that kids will be using in the next generation? Who knows? I don't know. Holograms beam directly into your brain. That's right. Uh, I don't know how that internet. works. Yeah. And Via wireless <laughs> connectivity. Yes, okay. But, I mean, at the moment, we've got like, there's Vine videos, which are quite famous, which are like six second clips. In the future, is it going to be less? Is it going to be shorter clips? People will do like vlogs that are three seconds long. Hi guys, I'm here! At and then I'll be it. Yeah. Yeah. The internet will get like millions of views and they'll become a superstar. Difficult to put a sentence into such short words, though. Mm. Yeah. Or any story. It's like Twitter. Have you got a Twitter? No, I haven't got a Twitter. Do you know what a Twitter is? Well, I know what Twitter is, but I don't tweet much. You don't? <laughs> at all? <laughs> at all. <laughs> do, you know what the, do you know what the saddest story in the world is in, in only six words? Here we go. The saddest story in the world in only six words. For sale, one condom never used. Oh. That's the saddest story ever told. That is sad. Yeah. I thought it would be like something like, um, went to biscuit tin, no jaffers. Oh God! Yes. Speaking of which, you could sort of have a competition, couldn't you? Who could look at this. the shortest one? So I've been sent a present. Now, as we haven't opened it, it's totally sealed up. It's, it's, it's sealed up like Uncle John seals presents. Like, tell, tell, tell. Because I, I always tell people. Oh God, here we Uncle go. Uncle John seals up presents proper, proper good, doesn't he? Yes, yes. Uncle John is very good at sealing up presents. Yes, he wraps them up several times. 
And they're already in the Shall box we? in any case. Yes, that's and right. And contained in the box. The, yeah. yeah. And you so keep going down and wrapped down up in until it's like, in the middle. it would be like a, a teacup in the box that that's size, right. wouldn't it? At least. I do yeah. have yeah. some yeah. idea of egg cup. <laughs> There's something. send us one egg cup at Christmas. <laughs> there is something with glass Very in nice here, egg cup, right? And I can tell you it's from someone called Chris, who's Polish. Okay, well, I mean, obviously the old thing is that I was just expecting, we, we don't normally open Simon's random Christmas presents on. Well, with well, a is this butcher's Simon? Knife. Is this a present for Simon? I believe so, yeah. It was sent to Hannah's advent kind of thing. Well, it's got so. fragile on it, so be careful, Simon. Oh, God. It's not the box I'm worried about. Well, it's your finger, yeah. That's yeah, nice. your finger. Jeez. Okay. Read before continuing. Oh, you go. Warning. Oh, oh my God. God. All right, Open carefully. This could be a long one there. Okay, so it's from Chris from Berkshire. Um, a while ago in one of your videos, the Hole Digger series, yeah. you made a few comments about Poland. I am Polish, currently living and working in the UK, but those comments only made me laugh and roll my <laughs> eyes a bit. <laughs> right? So he's saying, um, Poland may not be how I think it is. You think it is. I, famously, I have a thing in which I say that Poland has a poor infrastructure. Yeah. And I, I have to apologise for those statements <laughs> because Chris has sent me, like, amazing stuff, right? Um, so he says, um, you may try uh, variants of uh, cabbage stew sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully it's not sauerkraut. Oh Jars. no, it's... Jaffa cake. It's delicious. I told you. So I these, told you. these are the Polish Jaffa cakes. Jaffa cakes. And in England, there's loads of Polish shops because there's tons of Polish immigrants. And in most of the shops, you can find these Polish Jaffas. They are all wonderful people, actually. So I've not met and one I disliked. These are mm. apricots. These are cherry. These are raspberry. And these are blueberry flavoured Jaffas. But wait, there's more. He's also. See, the reason I wanted us to do this on camera is because this is amazing and it's so rare that I actually get presents from people. What I don't... are you talking about? <laughs> the kid, have you seen the kitchen? There's never a shortage of Jaffas in this office <laughs> and no one buys anything else to eat because okay. there's Now and again Jaffers. I get Jaffas. It's like you, Dan. Me, I was saying this yesterday. It's like you because... You know, you would say, oh I, would say to, I would say to you, can you buy some orange Chris. squash? And you would say, there's some ginger and Chris. lime squash in the cupboard. Why don't you drink that first? Uh, would I? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. This, that, this is Polish mead that he sent in. <clears throat> I'll crack that open. Have a look at that. Have a look at that. Oh, my I think God. You're have so a party, he has you? done amazing. Is that your mobile phone that just beeped, Dad? I yeah. bet it was. Miod Pitni Trotnik. So, massive, massive thanks. Pitni. Don't, Polish don't. Need. What? That's not racist to say it in a Polish accent. Oh my accent. god. Can you read any of that? I have no idea what it means. It means delicious, scrumptious, healthy honey alcohol. Good. So it shows the generosity of the Polish people. This is great. I'm going to drink this. Um, it's actually a present for me. Simon's going to not maybe drink this. Better give it back to Simon. <laughs> this is. Lovely. Thank you. We'll all have a drop Don't, don't send so many presents. If you so, want to give us presents for Christmas, you can donate to exactly. the Exactly. Thank exactly. you so much. We don't need your uh, Jaffa I've got enough. I'm sorted we now. We've got loads. We've got this meat, is me got sorted. Jaffers. We are giving up our time to be on here to encourage you to give money to people that need it in the world. Correct. Right? And also, good old Bill Gates is matching every donation to Empolia now, isn't he? Well, he is, yes. And, uh, uh, his prom is $35 million every oh year for God. five years, provided we can match it yeah. from our own donations. Yeah. yeah. So how much did you raise when you did a, a thing at the Village Hall lately? Uh, well, we didn't actually do it for Ren Polio in the Village Hall. What we did, we did an, a different exercise altogether. But in very amount, our club is only a small club. Yeah. And we raised about £450 from selling purple crow not selling sorry giving a purple crocuses away to people who made a donation why, why purple crocuses purple crocus because purple we use the color purple because when um, a child is immunized uh, abroad when they drop a pot of the drop of the um, vaccine. vaccine on the tongue they immune they dip their little finger into some purple dye Right. Ah, oh, so and they've that, all got a that, purple that finger. That rarely to show means that, been that we know who's done it, 
And if they come round again, you say, no, we've already done it, off you go. <laughs> <laughs> Do people try and get a second dose? Well, why not? I mean, two doses is better than one. It so taste, they does think. it taste good? So they think. Oh, right, I see. But, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, remember, there's such a lot of children, particularly when they're doing it in, uh, you know, tropical Africa and also India. Uh, there's such a lot of children. You want to make sure they all do it. And, of course, you can go around and talk to the families, and if you can see the children there that haven't got the dye on the finger, you can encourage them to come forward hmm. and have the vaccination or the immunisation. Yeah, that's good stuff. Well, that's a good. That's thank you. Thank you for that. I feel like nice I've learned. I've learned something. He's full of this. So yeah, that's that's jolly good. Um, well, there you go. I'm gi we're giving you a chance to donate now, and we will read up some donations later. And hopefully, if you do want to donate, you can leave us a message. Uh, it's very easy. You can maybe send a message or a question for my dad. If you want, would you answer people's questions about Certainly. stuff? Certainly. Yeah. Okay, cool. Please do so. We won't uh, accept anything too rude. Um, I've got a message from Will saying, Merry Christmas, Lewis's dad. Oh, well, thank you, Will. Merry Christmas kind. to you too. <laughs> oh, that's really nice. That is nice. Oh, wow. Well, so what I thought we'd do in the meantime is play a game which I've got on the iPad, which, is, which I didn't... I didn't really want to get Dad playing GTA 5 or anything, because I thought it might be too... Mm -hmm. Do you know what GTA is? No idea. Okay. <laughs> well, it's Grand Theft Auto. Uh, which is a crime. Which is a cr criminal activity. Oh. He's stealing Americans. cars. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto. It's, it's not a crime here, but... Mm. Well, it probably is, but it's not called that. It's, so you heard it here first, it's Lewis. Called, it's legal it's to steal car cars. Jacking, think, oh, yeah. Pretty much. No, isn't that... Or what? is that something different? I what think it's grand theft? vehicular theft. Vehicular theft. Vehicular theft. Vehicular theft. You can go to prison for it. Theft. Sorry, what was it? Vehicular theft. Oh. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> and, but we're not playing that. We're going to play a game on the iPad made by Inkle, who are one of the companies who... Um, Written by Megan uh, Jayanth. Uh, I think you'll find is Meg. It? So this was this. A, an adventure book written by uh, somebody. Meg. Megan Jayanth, um, back Meg. in the day. And it's been made into a game. And so, Dad, it's London, 1872. Right. And you have entered into the service of a new gentleman. OK. Uh, it would seem... I have to press forward, you see, every time. So this is the game. But he is a gambling man. Oh. What okay. sort of a bet do you think he might have made? What, what sort of a bet do you think this man might Given have made? Given that the game is called 80 Days, <laughs> and it's based on the adventures of Phileas Fogg. Have yes, you, I'm you, sure, I'm are sure. Are you familiar with those? This. They were written about when you were sort of banging around, young, young a young man. Uh, yes. 1872. This is, this is probably something to do with your childhood then. If you case. remember, trying to go around the world in 1872 was not easy. No. No, you couldn't just get on a jet. No, they couldn't get on a jet. Did no. they do like in-flight meals or anything? Mm, I don't think they had any in at all. <laughs> it wasn't any Jules flight. Verne. So, 80 days, yes, 80 days. He had a bet, didn't he, to get around the world, that he would get around the world in 80 days. And so that's our challenge. That's your challenge, Dad. And okay. as you can see, the world is pretty big. Mm -hmm. I don't now, know if you know how which way works. round do we have to go? Uh, as the, as the, this way. Okay, As and the, then we get an extra day. What is that? What is that wise? Uh, it's... When you have a sphere and you circle it this way, what's it called? Uh, Widdershins. No, that's the other way. That's on a disc, isn't it? Widdershins. Yeah, I'm thinking of Discworld, Lewis. Yeah. Yeah, what's it called? I think we're circumnavigating circumnavigating the globe. Aren't we? Yeah, that's right. But do we? what happens if you circumnavigate it against Eastwards. the spin of the world? Or is it spinning this way? Or is it which, world, which way is the world spinning? Oh, it's God. It's spinning this way. Isn't it? I don't know. Well, nobody seems to know. Oh my god. Let's we'll see, it, it right? It must be spinning. I think it spins this the other way. way. I think it spins I think it spins and we're going against the spin because when we finish our journey, of course. No, you got the wrong we are spinning the other way, Liz. Don't you remember like do you remember the sun days? the sun is gonna come up in the east and it's gonna sit in the west. And America is after us. Alright, mm, this boss. I don't know. Um, so we want to go east. We want to go this. We want to go. Yeah, we get an extra day if we go east. Do you remember in the book? This way across in the Europe. TV series okay. with Willy Fogg. So of course we start in London. Oh, mm -hmm. good old London. There's the spires, and um, so we've got. A, there's a bit of story here. So Monsieur Phileas Fogg returned home early from the Reform Club 
and in a newfangled steam carriage besides. Oh, okay. those are the ones that don't have horses driving them. That's right. Oh I, will, I will do the controlling. All you need to do, Dad, is... Mm. is tell you what is I want tell, you to do. Yeah, tell me where to go. So, your name is Passepartout. I guess that's a little bit like a passport, isn't it? Um, so you helped him down from the Iron Lunge steam-driven horse. Yeah. So it's, it's 1878, but they've got these steam-driven horse going around. So it's, mm. it's in a little bit of a sort of strange time. <laughs> It's an alternate history, um, this, this alternate setting. History? Because oh. they didn't have steam horses back in 18... Didn't horses, they? No. Well, but it seems like a kind of technology they might have in a sort of They could have done. Time. If things had gone slightly differently. So, you know, you, first of all, he says to you, Passepartout, we are going around the world. Around the world, monsieur? Around the world, monsieur. Very good, monsieur. You ask, <laughs> utterly astonished. <laughs> We shall circumnavigate the globe within 80 days. He was quite calm as he proposed this wild scheme. We leave for Paris on the 8.25, in oh, an hour. I have not prepared. You said wretchedly. <laughs> oh, you're in jest. <laughs> quickly trying to organize a list of necessary items in my mind. Then do it now. Pack my cloak and my evening jacket. There is not a moment to waste. So, we have a new route from London to Paris. And that will come up just shortly. I am seeing this ever so slightly before you are, so right, there will be okay. a little bit of a delay. What um, kind of things do you need to pack on a journey around the world? Oh, I should think you need an umbrella. Now, what did he say you wanted? Now, unfortunately, you, you don't, don't have, have a choice it. of having an umbrella yet. Yeah, that's a shame. What have um, you got, though? Top hat, evening jacket. What does a gentleman need for travelling around the world? Well, at least he needs a top hat. A gentleman needs a top hat. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I Fine Bond Street hat. Uh, now, if he's going to get any help, you might have to go to various events and functions, so he needs that's a right. dinner jacket. Just exactly. bear in mind that the items you're putting in can be quite large and you don't have much room in that one suitcase. That's right. So, so what else do we want? Do we want a travelling cloak or an evening jacket? Why have we only got one suitcase? Well, Dad, we're in a hurry. Yeah, we're in a hurry. It's passport mm -hmm. too. It's just him to carrying to the it. Suitcase shop. Phineas isn't going to carry a suitcase. Oh, okay. You're carrying it. He's a gentleman. Oh, yes. Gentleman doesn't <laughs> carry. Mr. Fogg won't carry. You're his valet. Yeah. Hmm. Problem, isn't it? Yes. Top want... hat and evening jacket. So we could take the evening really... jacket and the train timetable, or we could take the travelling cloak. That's your first decision, Dad. What would you like to well, take? Well, I think we would have to take the travelling cloak. Okay. We're not going to worry about the Indian time no, train timetable. Time we'll time worry time. about that later. When we get India's India. miles away, isn't it? Yeah, okay. forget about it for the moment. So, our completed gentleman travel set should protect us against uncomfortable conditions. There we are. So, we're going to get straight on and head off to Paris on the... Oh, my God, look, that's the steam that's horse. It. So, the steam horse is here. Oh! It's good, isn't it? And so, off we go. No mucking around. <laughs> straight off on a journey around the world. Are you excited? Yeah. Left all your stuff at home, didn't tell your wife or anything? No. Oh didn't. my God. I don't She'll think right. I was married, actually. Send her oh. a text okay, or cool. a telegram. A telegram, okay, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Calico horses race past Piccadilly Circus and Pall Mall. Pall Mall? Pall Mall. Pall Mall. Faster than a team of thoroughbreds. Even so, the whistle of the 825 was blowing as he pulled up to Charing Cross Station. <laughs> <gasps> what are you going to do, Dad? We have no tickets, you explain, exclaimed. You exclaimed in horror. <gasps> we raced along the concourse and threw ourselves aboard. That's for, no, 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 you have no tickets. That's you what have you have to choose one or the other. You have to choose. Oh, dear. So you said, that does not, that does not signify, Monsieur Fogg remarked over his shoulder, hurry towards the platform. We must not miss this train. I so know. what do you do, Dad? Well, do you I... rush after him and leap aboard, or do you do you try and dash to the ticket booth? You can always buy tickets on the I train from the guard. I rushed after him and threw him on board and got on myself. Okay. Just as another train whistle pierced the air, but a guard raises his thick brows at us as we settled into a nearby compartment. He held out a hand. To this please. Alas, monsieur, we're in a great hurry. Oh, I like that. Very gentlemanly. Uh, you explain, giving him a beseeching look. You can read that out if you say. <laughs> Go on, plead with him. Uh, we did not have time to buy the tickets. You, you may purchase. I was going to be oh, the guard. Go on, you be the Let me be the bloody guard. Be the guard. <laughs> you, you may purchase them from me, <laughs> although it's more expensive, I'm afraid. Eighty-five pound, please. Oh. God, that's plenty. Who argued with him? You or me? That's expensive. You do. Oh, I do. I see. Well, I argued with him. Oh my goodness. I mean, okay. eighty pounds. Eighty-five pounds is expensive now. Pounds. Or rather, it's expensive now. You right. began to, but, okay. but Monsieur Fogg interrupted. 
Passepartout, you will pay the sum at once, he put in coldly, and m remunerate this man for his patience. I handed over the £85. Oh, so you're not giving extra? <laughs> and smiled a thin smile from one working man to another. The guard gave me our tickets, slid the compartment door shut behind him with a pneumatic uh, hiss. There you go. That's the train there. Unfortunately, Got Monsieur, choo -choo train. your funds have gone down somewhat. Yes, you only have £3,915 with which to make your journey. Oh. Will that get you across the world? Hopefully. Oh, we hope. London oh, smog nice. gave way to rolling oh. hills in the pastures of the Kentish countryside, still untouched by the hand of technological advancements. So which, what happens here? Uh, what happens, do you think, Dad? Does he, does Monsieur Fogg read his paper? And while you're um, repacking our bags, or is do it? Do you think? I mean, you're curious, obviously, as to why you're on this journey in the first place. But do you want to speak out, or would it be out of place? <sighs> oh I, no, it would be out of place, I think. But if you have more information, then maybe you can help him out more and make suggestions, or, or would that be too presumptuous? Um, you know, what kind of relationship do you have with Phileas? Um, do you speak out, master or? and servant? I'm oh God! Yeah. Oh no! No, You're going to be a dog's whatever, body, though. Whatever he you? says goes. Oh, no. Ooh, he's oh. the boss. You're I can advise him. Yeah. But, he's the know, gentleman traveller, and you're the gentleman valet. He doesn't always take the advice. Phileas knows best. Yes, yes. Right. A true British gentleman. What are you going to do, Dad? Well, I'm going to let him read his paper. OK. We pass the day in silence, until a guard rapped on our door a few miles before Dover. What? What? That's what he says. Ba -ba uh, Do you want to give him the guard's voice? We are about to submerge! He warned. Take some people a bit funny, so watch out! Um, submerge? What do you <laughs> mean, submerge? <laughs> this is the London to Paris, Amphitrite. Uh, what is that? Amphitrite. Amphitrite? What does that mean? Is <laughs> that water. like something amphib amphib amphibious? <laughs> yeah. Ah, this is the London to Paris, Amphitrite Express! He explained as though talking to a particularly dim-witted child. The submersible train? Talk of all the London papers? I must have missed it. <laughs> <laughs> You've been busy, Dad. You've been very busy. Missed it? Every intruder has been examined and stamped with the artificial... What's that? Artificer? Artificer. Artificer. Artificer seal. There's some very strange words in this. Well, who are the arti artificers? They're, they're, a bunch, they're an engineers guild who yeah. make steam, steam, um, steam, steam, so steam it's punk a, This is a steampunk setting. Yeah. Yes. This is the world's only bath escape locomotive. Apparently that's a thing. Okay, what are you going to do? Well, can't do anything, we're in it now, we're on there. Are you going to press your face to the window <laughs> and stare out at the fish? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to have to do something, but I'm not quite sure what. Close you, my eyes, I think. You could not help a shiver as the fins above the Amphitrite's wheels extended with a hydraulic Now I'm going to close my eyes. Night fell, and we plunged past the end of the track into the freezing water of the English Channel. Oh, my God. And onwards into the tunnel. There you go. Off you We're go. On day two already. The, the Underwater Express. This is wonderful, Amphitrite isn't it? Amphitrite ploughed through the water this overnight. Is, this is, when is it? 18 when? It's uh, 1872. 1872. 1872. But it's an like, alternate history. An underwater express. Yeah. This is yeah. wonderful. So you can ask. Would you like to speak out? Would you like to mention anything to um, uh, yes, as you reach Calais? Course. Yes. Yes. Do you have a route in mind, Monsieur? Very polite. Mm. You I ask. demanded to know the purpose of our journey. <laughs> no, <laughs> getting, no. getting very brave here. No. Uh, I am yet undecided. My master admitted. The new canal has sped up the shipping route from Suez to Bombay, though perhaps we could take the Trans-Siberian Railway across Russia. Surely not Bombay. Ah, I exclaimed. Surely not Trans-Siberian <laughs> Russia. <laughs> we shall certainly wilt in the scorching heat. You have to choose one. Yeah. There you go, you have to choose one. Dear me. There are other alternatives. We may also travel over land and across the Black and Caspian Seas. Mm, but Monsieur, which is the fastest? Ah, that's right. It's all about speed. It's all about speed. I believe, said he, that is what we shall put to the test. <gasps> Do you know what that means? That's what you're Pas saying. Pable! Pable. I scarcely know what to think. We arrived at the Paris Gare du Nord just after one o'clock. Automaton porters lifted our what? luggage and then our Robotic persons porters. onto the platform with long, <laughs> delicately filigreed iron arms. Oh Paris, <gasps> city of my heart. Oh, I am home, but not to stay. Oh. 
So you've discovered some new routes here. All right. The Suez Canal takes you down mm. by boat to Jeddah in uh, Saudi Arabia, I think that is, isn't it? And then just to in India. Uh, a, a day. Or the Trans-Siberian yeah. Express. Trans-Siberian <laughs> takes you from Moscow, winding through Russia, all oh. the way to Ekaterinburg, Omsk, all the way down through uh, Kutsk. Karimskaya. All those Uris, places that you see on the risk map. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, don't have anyone in them. Oh, well, let's think, monsieur. So there's some Train. options here. Now you're in Paris, mm, you can right. visit a market to buy something, or you can just have a look around town, which mm. takes up a lot of time. Well, we think we might go to the market. There might be things we can pick up which we haven't brought with us. In the market, we can pick up all sorts of things. So we've got, oh my God. we can pick up in the Rue Claire, Seventh Arrondissement, we can pick up some leather braces, a false passport, Egyptian cigars, a cold compress, or a tartan blanket. Well, I, know, I don't propose, Monsieur, to go to Siberia, so we won't need to Wait, buy a blanket. Now, hang on. So look at what you've already got. You've got woolen clothes, a top hat, and a cloak. That's right. So you're pretty much set for going into cold weather. No, he's good for rain, not cold weather. And he's also smart, he's a gentleman. Surely, surely if you're a gentleman, you should go but fly But why the bring the India clothes? Subcontinent. Oh, well, I, is, it, is it the season of the, of the typhoons and the terrible weathers and Who the knows? rains? Uh, might come no, in no, I'm, I'm prepared to buy a fake passport. Now, of course, we could sell our, our top hat and cloak for a premium price here because they're yellow, you see. So that means that in this marketplace, there's a lot of demand for top hats and travelling cloaks. Good gracious. So we could it's sell fashion, them, isn't it? It's make a fashion. bunch of money. Look, we could sell our cloak for a £280. Or you can buy an extra suitcase and hope that it, you can take the suitcase with you. Because well, on hmm. some, you might have to leave it behind now and again. Do. Well, let's think. Which we could, we could be sell bad. a travelling cloak, we could buy a tartan blanket. Uh, uh, oh, so we're going to have something to keep us warm if necessary. Okay, let's sell our cloak. And we'll sell the top hat too, and we'll buy a tartan blanket, and we will also buy. Uh, do you want some leather braces? No, we don't need any no, of that stuff. Okay, cool. Um, oh my so god! So we spent the whole day in Paris looking around. But look at the extra money you've got. And uh, Good grief! Uh, actually, we've, we've tilly dilly dallied a little bit because mm. it's now time for bed. If we if we wait if we'd been a bit quicker, we could have. If we if we'd had a quick look around the market, grabbed a few things, and, and nipped back, but we spent the whole day there. Did we? Oh, so dear. unfortunately. We can only just go and sleep in a hotel now. We can't. Yep. We can't actually head off anywhere. No, I don't think so. We'll have a spot of dinner. Now, you know. now, obviously, when you get to a new city, you need to um, explore it a little bit to find out where to go the next day. So we took a hotel for the night. We would be comfortable here, as your folk remarked. But travelling overnight will be more efficient. So we must board the longest journeys available. Is that what you think? Perhaps he replied. Uh, the thought is short answer indicating, I think, that one-day journeys might often be more flexible in their timing and allow for more connections. Still, the surrounds of the Hotel Ritz were most enjoyable. Mm. Monsieur, can we afford it? Perhaps. Uh, so, we have to explore here. Um, so we're going to explore the city. Now, when you explore it, uses for, for, it takes four hours, but you, dis you discover new Look routes. Look at that. Look so at we've that. got some routes. We can go opens up for you. out mm, to all sorts of places. Okay. We had a few hours to spare. I asked Monsieur Fogg if I might enjoy my city before we had to leave. Indeed, and you should learn anything of note. Be sure to relay it if you if you should learn anything of note. But do not waste my time. We have no time to spare. Why the hurry? Well, we have to get around the journey. <laughs> two days. But what is the purpose? We are winning a wager. He answered seriously. Ah. We will circumnavigate the globe. In and days. if we should Left. fail? Well, we shall not, <laughs> he answered. Wow. I could not argue with that and headed into town. My talk on the streets, the talk on the streets was one thing only, an enormous, elegant oval stadium constructed upon the green fields of the Champ du Mar and containing the technological marvels, art and music oh. parts and milling crowds at the World's Fair of 1872. Oh my God. My city still wore the scars of last year's siege. As did you. Oh. I ventured inside. Paris and France had surrendered to the Prussian army after four and a half months of grim, blood-soaked resistance in the Franco-Prussian War. Now this World's Fair was intended to reassure the country's citizens. And the world. I put away my memories of those grim days. Oh, well, you did not doubt it. So, 
Uh, the City of Light was still a great capital of the world, but you did not doubt that what's this? So you were somewhat overawed, or maybe there was something to be learned from the World's Fair. Do you want to go in, or but do you perhaps, not want to lose the time? Perhaps there was something to be learned from my master inside. Mm. I Always could not afford to lose myself within the huge exposition. So, inside, there's an artificer replacing an arc light, or you can head west towards the aircraft hangar. What are you going to do, airship hangar? Oh, oh my airship God, an airship. Hangar. Yes. Hang on a minute, an Let's airship. Let's go to see, see the airship. There's a husband and wife pair selling panoramic hot air balloon rides. Are you interested or you want to look at the hangar full of airships? No, I want to look at the airship. Okay. Flying vehicles of all shapes and sizes, attended by sharp-eyed crews from all over the world. Mm. My eye was immediately caught by... What was it caught by, Dad? An African-made rigid metal balloon. The, gl uh, the gilded Egyptian... Ifrit class airship. Ifrit class That's airship. Like a genie. Mm. And the metal clad four propeller Savakar Atomant. Atomotic? <laughs> or the bulky ga gas powered <laughs> Gaik? Atomant Gaik. Or a gyrocopter from Peru. And the twin, so, yes. If you look gracious, at the, what a choice. If you look at certain ones, you might be able to get a lift with them back to where they came from, maybe. Mm. Who knows? Yes, indeed. What do you think? For example, the. Um, Gilded Egyptian class airship may get us to Egypt. Oh, it's all painted all over with stylized poppies and feathers. It resembles nothing more than a vast flying sarcophagus. Oh, mm. oh dear. What do you want to say? Do people really fly in things like that? You asked. Indeed, hundreds of them do, and every day, he replies with a booming laugh. They say <laughs> the skies of Arabia are crisscrossed with the trails of Egyptian ships. Perhaps one day soon, Monsieur Fogg and I would find ourselves flying in such a crowd. Oh. I returned to his position center, my thoughts turning with clouds and engine rotors. Do you, what are you going to do now, eh? Mm -hmm. You're interested in. So the artificer is still replacing the arc light, or you could head off. You don't want to waste too the much time. The clock is ticking. What do you think? But do you ah, want to find out talk more? Talk to a, an artificer. I think so. Artificer. I think we should talk to an artificer. Ah, she oh, first we... disconnected the strange machine powering the lights, a spinning iron wheel wound around with a series of armature coils. What are you going to do? Well, I don't want to disturb his work. Her work? i wait until it's finished. Artificers were a notoriously irritable breed. <laughs> this is bleeding folly and waste, the artificer grumbled. It's a, a woman. Thick northern <laughs> accent. These grand <laughs> Oh my God, wow. beasts. Is that says. so? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... that's oh. Oh yes, and the bleeding, you blonic off candles, because only last two hours. Not like I have anything to do, eh? Oh, um, yes, I, uh, I didn't, I didn't like his tone very much. Her tone. Um, <laughs> perhaps. Are you gonna, are you gonna retreat hastily? Yes, yes. Perhaps, uh, perhaps he's got a more gentle touch than we believe, though. Well, no, I don't think so. So there we are. Um, let, I think we should head out into the world now, because we can't get around and this you return to Monsieur Fogg who was eating a meal of plain boiled beef à l'anglaise. Now what is that? Beef à l'anglaise? Oh it must be sort of roast beef. Yeah. Roast beef. Mm. Roast beef. Did you enjoy the expedition? My master inquires diffidently. As though I'd been out visiting an aged great aunt. Having preferred a hearty meal and an English newspaper. Which one do you want? Which one do you think? He, would you, you could I get think, into his mind. I think I would prefer the English newspaper. You think that's what he's been doing? Definitely. Yeah. Well, what do you want to say about the, um, what do you want to say about the exposition? Nothing else could possibly impress you now, or... We were unspeakably lucky to live in such an age of invention, mm. or... Would we travel by airship, I suppose? Oh. I think we travel by airship, I suppose. Yes. I think it highly likely, he Oof. replied. They are expensive, but extremely fast. I dreamed that night of mechanical wonders and automatons <gasps> with beautifully enameled faces, knowing little of the strange inventions and stranger people I would meet on the way. Okay, so let's depart, Dad, from Paris. Paris. Where? From Paris. We can, we can leave to Amsterdam, uh, which, which is 98 pounds and arrives today. Uh, that, that, is a, that is a taxi ride, I believe. Um, or... We could take a train, the Orient Express, to Munich. But that's a two-day wait before it even leaves. Oh, but we could alter it. Our Englishman's wardrobe 
If we pay an extra £350, we can leave tomorrow. Oh my god. We can grease the wheels. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, isn't it? And, and it's leaving make tomorrow. Some, or we could... Um, Go to Nice. Nice. It's really nice. Nice. In mm -hmm. Nice. Of France, but that, that goes tomorrow nice. at 8am. Mm. So mm -hmm. what do you want to do? Do you want to stay the night? Uh, or do you want to... Do you want to? Do you want to stay another night here, or do you want to head off straight away to the Netherlands on a private mm, car? No, I'm not. No, we want to go down to Nice. You want to go down to Nice tomorrow morning? Mm -hmm. Okay. I wonder if we can grease the wheels of this. Let's see. No, we can't grease it. So we're gonna to have to wait till bright and early yes, tomorrow let's morning. Let's have a night in Paris. Okay, another night in Paris it is. So we oh my see. God! Wasting so much time in Paris. That's Lovely. <laughs> we're going home. We're we're getting to we're getting to prepare. Oh, here we go. For the journey. We've got remained of the day. You went out to explore a little and succeeded only in having your pocket picked to the tune of 24 Great success. Pounds. You've only lost a bunch of money. <laughs> okay. Off we go. We're okay. on the Pyrenees Express. Did you? Train. We're not mucking around. <laughs> so we've got to wait till 8am and then off we go. This is a real iron horse. We boarded our train at Gare de Lyon, which had only nice. opened the previous week. The ticket booths were all staffed by Automata. Well, compared to leaving London, it was a calm affair. Hmm. What do you think? It was a calm affair, wasn't it? <laughs> Thanks to the polite and helpful automata who dispense and check tickets as well as serving drinks. Oh my god, they serve drinks. Now, you've settled into a nice trip here, Dad. We found a compartment and settled into plush seats with a complimentary glass of Provencal rosé to grace the trip. Oh. We French. We know how to travel. <laughs> you declared. <laughs> it is too much to hope that the rest of our journey will be so comfortable. Yes, said Monsieur Fox. Yes. We're taking a single parsimonious <laughs> sip of his wine. He's a bit of a he's a bit of an arse, isn't he, Phileas Fogg? Mm, I don't know. I'd, he's he's, he's seems very well, well, He's yes. a very English gentleman. He doesn't he doesn't speak out, does he? He doesn't. Mm. He's just expected he to drop everything and travel across the world. He's being sort of, he's quite rude. He doesn't seem very interested in what you have to say a lot of the time. Mm. You are talking about my master, Monsieur. <laughs> I do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> well, on the way, we can, of course, do a bit of conversation. Yeah, oh, uh, let's have some let's conversation. First, with the, uh, the conductor here. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested in Nice. Now, where do you think we want to go after Nice? There? Do you think Venice, Rome, Munich, Belgrade, or Sofia? Do you think any of those are on our, on our travel itinerary? Oh, I see. So we're very limited, are we? We can't get a boat. Um, well, I mean, he, if we talk to the conductor, he might have some yes, idea I mean, of where to he, go. Can so. we ask him if he's got. Knows where there's a boat across. I do not know about boats. I'm a trained so conductor. <laughs> Can we travel from Nice to Rome? I have no idea, but there is a demand for tartan blankets in Rome. You oh, have a tartan blanket, there? don't you? So oh, maybe well. we could go to Rome. So you can hmm. sell the tartan blanket in Rome and make yeah, extra money. Make some money, some money make, yes, okay. So apparently you can obtain a Chateau de Creme in Rome, which will sell for a fortune in Vienna, he recommends. Hmm. The hours flew by, and you spent them, what, did you spend them in conversation or watching the scenery go by? Oh, well, in conversation, really. It's yeah, interesting to find out what Trying people can do for you. gather information about your next leg. Hmm. You met a charming Viennese soldier. Um, what did you have? Had a pleasant, if unproductive, conversation. Uh, <laughs> while the hours away, the train rattled on, arriving at Tunis late in the evening. We stepped out to balmy autumn weather, a gentle murmur. Yeah. Ah, oh, my friends. La mer. La mer. There you go. Lovely. So oh. we will have a sleep in Nice. Late. It's eight o'clock. And then we will explore first thing in the morning and see where we can go. We'll pass the night. The long pebbled beaches of Nice were filled with Italians of one sort or another. Mm. Now, of course. A few protesting the loss of the city to France. Is that what happened? Was Nice originally part of Italy? Looks like it, yeah. Quoting Good Garibaldi Lord. with a great passion. Garibaldi, you do? You nice biscuits. Them, Dad, and, and what did you do? Did you retire early that night? Or did you I, I stroll along the promenade? Yeah, I took a dip in the sea. Did you? thinking this might be perhaps your last chance to swim by choice, rather Absolutely. than, say, the unfortunate sinking of some cockle shell craft in the Azores, <laughs> or wherever you might end up. The water was warm and welcoming, oh. and you had an enjoyable time, until you returned to find your wallet. Oh, for no goodness sake. In your you, shoes. You got pickpocketed in Paris. I by Italians, of course. Did you? Oh, my God. And accosted one whose knowledge of political slogans seemed to be worse than the others. She brushed me away disinterestedly, packing up and moving on. There was no one else about. 
So what did you do? Well, you can't just blame Italians for the crime. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Those god! Italians. Well, I found a sailor to talk to. Mm -hmm. Did you? Yes. And asked for advice about how we should proceed. He shrugged. <laughs> this car. Do you want to do it? Italian. Uh. What, how do Italians speak? It's a me. Mamma mia! Is a spicy with the ball? Yeah. That's incredibly offensive. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guys at the Venice and the boat to Rome. Depends where you want to go, of course. Oh, what did you say? We're going around the world. I'm telling everyone, <laughs> I declared. Well then, you better go to Rome! There's airships there! Okay. Ah. Do you want to go to a casino or are you, you going to get some early early kip, Dad? What do you think? I think we'll get some early kip. Oops. Well, I accidentally sent you to the casino. You can't get some early kip. No, it's my half, feet are tired. It's half six in the morning. No, 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 still, this was last it? night, you see. So this oh, was right. last night, yeah. Okay. So je uh, the doorman says, gentlemen and ladies only, no one of the lower classes. <gasps> so he doesn't let you into his spicy, spicy casino. You know. um, you're a servant, so yes. you're a lower class. Do you want to ask for a low class gambling service or do you want to just head out? And get um, out of town? Are you going to stand up to him? Who the hell does this man think he is? Yes, I had no time for his high standards. Okay, cool. So you went elsewhere. You went down, begged farewell to the sea, and to France. Return to your master, but you've discovered oh, new routes. Oh, look at that! So we got a trip to Venice, or we got a trip to Nice. Now, if we quickly look at where we can go, we can take a car to Venice, which leaves right now, and will cost oh sixty-four God. pounds. Or we can wait till tomorrow afternoon at four p.m. for a ferry. Or we could actually pay a little bit to leave this afternoon at four p.m. But it costs oh my God! It costs four hundred pounds. So you can spend a hell of a lot so, of money and go to Rome, or you can leave immediately and spend less money. What do you think, Dad? And how much does it cost <laughs> to go to um, Venice. Venice? Only sixty-four pounds on a car. Mm, sixty-four pounds. Well, let's think. I think we can get a boat from Venice. Uh, so yes, yeah, so let's go to Venice. Okay, let's just check the market quickly before we leave Nice. There's a fur oh. coat for sale. Would you like to buy a fur coat? That might be warm. Yes. Yeah, so Fox get fur. A fox fur coat. I'm grabbing that quickly, and I'm not taking any more suitcases. I'm going to go straight, straight off early go, in the morning. Go, go, go. We're off. And it's, uh, it's the open road. It'll be a little bit bothersome for Monsieur Fogg. He's not going to like it. So you mm. see that it's a minus nine hearts. That means Monsieur Fogg might a bit, get a bit grumpy. Oh dear. Um, but he's got know, very sort of high standards for his travel, yes. and he doesn't mm. like the bumpy roads. Journey across the mountains was glorious, as the sun beat down on us and made us feel lofty as kings. Uh, a shame then that the car stank of grease and oil. Did you not like it, the car, Dad? Did you not think it was the finest thing on the trip? Do you not like the grease and the oil? Well, it's a smell. You don't like. <laughs> you don't well, like you better it. get used to it because you're going to be going on a lot hellish of... thing, and it put creases. But at least we're only going to Venice. Your trousers. Oh no, you got creases in your trousers. All right, let's have a chat to the lady driver, Mademoiselle Mibel. She doesn't normally talk to her passengers, but she's going to talk to you about Venice. Where do you think? Oh God, she says, I heard they sit their <laughs> dead in the canals, you know. Oh dear. Where would you like Careful to Careful with Venice, drinking then? the water there. Do you want to head down to Rome from Venice or Belgrade or Prague? What are you interested well, in? Well, I'm looking to get some transport further south. Really? Mm. What, what kind of, how much further south? I don't know where on earth we could go. Venice. Oh my God. Where do you go? Oh. oh we don't want to go to Prague. Mm. Uh, oh. Let's, what are you eating, Simon? Blueberry Jaffa cakes. Oh, okay, sure. I'm all right. Cool. They smell like sugar. It smells they like smell a like shop. sugar. Yes, yeah, very powerful. There you go. So anyway, you just hide them from me. Yeah, over there. she'll give us some information, um, but we don't need any of that. We're good. Oh look, so she did tell us there is a boat, Dad, from mm. Venice <laughs> to Athens. Splendid. That is what we're looking for. The road was not long. By midday, we had crested the mountains. Now journey down was almost steam free. We rolled with the driver pumping the brake handle. You relish the fresh air? Relish the fresh air. Oh, good. There we go. And you could see your master did as well. <laughs> and then there was the Adriatic Sea. Mm. There was still another two hours to go. <laughs> but there was still another two hours to go. Sparkling as though encrusted with jewels. Thoughts of grimy London flew from my head. This was the life. <sighs> In short, the car did not explode. And we were rowed across the gulf to the city of canals. The oh, lamps were just being lit, mm -hmm. and we lost ourselves in the narrow winding alleys, enjoying the smells of grilling fish and... Re Have you been to Venice, Dad? Indeed. And the sparkle really? of glass from the shop windows. Mm. This was a pretty place we had arrived in, indeed. Mm. Yes, we have. So you get there, it's 4 p.m. in the afternoon, 3 p.m. in the afternoon. You've got time to, um, you'll see, you can't... You, the ship to Athens leaves 
in two days at 11 a.m. Oh, two but days. But it could leave tomorrow oh. if you pay them a little bit more. That is a lot of money, though. We are going to um, we are going to just check out the market. It looks like the fur coat will sell well here, so I'm going to sell that off. I'm um, also. Do you think we should pick up anything here? Carnival mask. Maybe? That mask is really mm. creepy. It's, it's, it's worth yeah. a lot of money in Alexandria. We might not go there, but who knows? Mm. Pacific no, timetable, Dad. Do you think we might, might buy that? a Pacific timetable? Seems we'll pretty grab cheap. That, sure. And then we'll just quickly explore the the city. Oh, the Pacific timetable. Here you go. It says ah. there's, a, there's a route from Hong Kong through to Yokohama in in Japan. Oh okay. my god, that is a hell of a journey. And then if that goes wow. all the way across the sea, across the Pacific. Oh my god, and another route Pacific across the Pacific. Or you could go from Manila in the Philippines, mm. all the way across the Pacific, Dad. All the mm, way. That's even longer. It's going to Hawaii. Honolulu, capital of Hawaii. And two routes. And then San a trip, Francisco. A trip down from San Francisco. Oh my god. Or. Somewhere. That was a good buy. Oh my god, it's still going! There is also, this is Even what you get like, when you buy a timetable. Look, so we've got Pyongyang. Oh my god! A Vladivostok trip here going through Japan. Goodness. That was really yeah. valuable. That is that is going to pay dividends in and the future. And before the day runs out, we're going to get some more information here. So Venice will take you down to Rome if you want. You are waiting your turn. There's a gondola rank near the Rialto Bridge. Have you been there? Yes, when a, when yes, a gondolier from across the canal waves frantically to catch your attention. Monsieur, I will take you, he says. I waved her over. What, you waved her over? Okay. Get my head down. Oh, you waved her over, saying, uh, tired of waiting in line. She made a sharp turn through the water, earning the ire of several other boatmen who had to swerve to avoid her. Via meta! The booking agent who ran the rank shook his fist in her direction. Leave my customers alone. You deserve no customers, Zorzi! Fiametta shouted back, raising her oar in defiance. Those creatures of yours are not gondoliers. They know nothing of the soul of Venice. Oh, they're probably auto martyr. That's right. That's why. I did not understand her meaning. Until you peered at one of the gondolas in the rank. Or did you question the booking agent? Or were you not interested? Oh, no, I went to question the booking agent. Okay. Signor, uh, Signor, my automaton gondolier. No, it's the man. Oh, man. God, you do him then, Zorzi. Signor, my automaton gondoliers are the pride of Venice. He insisted. They are guaranteed safe by the Skula, our local artificers guild. Fiametta here is a troublemaker. From the water, Fiametta calls. I am a true gondolier. So what would you like to do? Would you like to step into one of the automatons, which are certified, or fear meta, or just forget about it? It's too complicated. Yeah, let's go away from the crowd. This kind of this is this is and this is our very near future is going to be like this. You need to take risks, Dad. You need to travel. Just no, we're think, going on the boat to Athens. Just oh. think, in in a few years' time, we're probably going to have a choice between taking taxis with people driving or driverless taxis. In the real world, yeah. That's actually going to happen in a few years' yeah, time. Yeah, Dad. You can't just ignore it. You've got, you got, you got to I'm choose. Not, not, do you want the human gondolier or do you want the robot gondolier? We're going to um, go away into the crowd. Right, OK, you're the boss. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you're not going to get into like, their argument. Forget it. You're not going to get involved. Forget it. I'm not getting embroiled in this nonsense. You're going to walk around Venice instead. Yes, That's I'm fine. going to okay. have a nice walk around, see what it's all about. Between irate gondoliers and strange automatons, was there no safe way to get around these You are not soulless monsters! <laughs> get out of here! It's like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> you're What's an English What's wrong gen? with them? Jeez. OK, you are the boss. I was walking, you were walking along a canal side in Venice when you found yourself in the midst of a group of revellers. <gasps> they were a fabulous the array of masks. Some beak nose, others brightly feathered, and some spun in fine glittering wire. You didn't get the mask, did what you? What did you do, Dad? I Excuse bowed me. in greeting. Did you? And gave them such surprise that one trip turned and tumbled <laughs> into the canal. <laughs> Her friends seemed drunkenly unconcerned and fell about in peeling laughter as the women cursed and thrashed in the dark water. Oh, God. What did you do, Dad? I shook my head in despair. Oh, what are you like? Oh, my God. Well, they not even tried to help her. The woman Can't seemed swim. to be spending more energy shaking her fist and cursing than attempting to swim. I saw her swallow a good few mouthfuls of canal water as the heavy clothes dragged her down. She's going to die. Oh, there was no choice. I ah, didn't. there we go. There we go. Reaching her in a few strokes. Suta law. The water was cold. She kicked and fought as I hauled her to a nearby flight of steps. 
Oh it's, my god! It's the canal lady, she was drunk. Fiametta is a daughter of the canal, one of her friends put in. You should have left her in it! Another drunken youth agreed. It's the only time she bathes! Fiametta coughs and chokes as I hold her from the water. Oh, Fiametta. It was indeed the same Fiametta you had encountered earlier. <sighs> it was clear she recognised me as well. Ah, the mysterious foreigner. Good evening. Yeah. He returned. I feigned ignorance. No, 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 you should <laughs> You get a choice! <laughs> You've already you, said you hello. can't choose both. Yes, I can. <laughs> this, she declared, turning to her friends, is the Frenchman who got away from me earlier today. They burst into laughter. What did you do, Dad? So did you, are you, did you blush? Are you embarrassed by it? Or did or you, bow, you just go? No, yes, no, no, no. that's right. Had to bow handsome. handsomely. Okay. Oh. Come drink with us, she gestures you to come closer. Ooh. What do you Ooh. think? Oh, yes. That's yeah. a good idea. Oh. Oh, there you go. And once you were close enough, she slapped you. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that is for touching me without my leave, she said triumphantly. But you were drowning! He said. I was not, she countered furiously. I am Venetian. I would not drown if you pushed my head underwater and held it there. Hmm. Shall we not test that moment? <laughs> <laughs> she narrowed her eyes at me, at you. Do not mind Fiametta, her friend remarked softly. She's angry because of her brother. Because oh. of what happened to her brother. Hmm. What happened? What happened to her brother? Sophos happened to him. And that blasted Greek has joined with the schooler. School of the Artificers, you see. Oh, what yeah. you made all the... Well, sorry, what is a schooler? It is the Artificers Guild. Uh, we knew the... this already. If you chance to take the airship from Rome to Athens, you might meet Signor Sophos. Mm. Put a knife in his heart oh, before my... he takes yours. Oh, I see. Mm. Yes, well, I'll give him your love then. <laughs> uh, ambiguously. She laughed darkly, and one of her friends took her out. Leave such thoughts for another night. You return to Phileas, somewhat damp. So there's a new route, you see, a Rome to Athens airship, but maybe you can take the boat instead. So, we today our choices are, we could mm -hmm. take the train leaving at uh, before 1pm before to Vienna, we could take the goods wagon, which is a bit of a rough trip, it's only 35 bucks. Phileas doesn't like that, he to, will not uh, like that at pass. all. He will not be pleased. You've got He's not cargo, he's a gentleman. Ferry which uh, departs tomorrow at 11 a.m. so you've got to spend another day here, or... Phyllis doesn't know that you either, look today. at that! You could, you could pay another, uh, pay uh, 800 pounds to get a, a rapid cheat, a cheat, cheat on the ferry Look today. at that! Response to ferry! To mm. Athens! Or Thoroughly ungentlemanly behaviour! You could take the steam carriage uh, any time, right now, and get in Rome early morning. So you might be there soon. What do you think, Dad? Mm, I don't think we go to Athens. So we've got to wait another day, or are we going to pay to speed it up? How much are we going to pay to speed it up? Oh, I don't know. Oh, it costs uh, 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 nearly a thousand. Nearly a thousand? Yeah. Oh dear, that is expensive. It is expensive. That's yes. not that £99 pounds is what we have to pay for weight then, is it? Yeah. Mm. What, do you think, what do you think? Maybe we should go to Rome down on the train, or mm. what do you think, Dad? We could get the airship, of course, from Ath from Rome to Athens instead. Mm. Or we could just carry on going across the continent. Maybe if we headed off to Budapest on the goods wagon or Vienna on a nice car, we'd be able to go somewhere from there. What do you think? Well, probably, uh, perhaps we'd go by train then. Okay. So, what, you want to go down to Rome on the train? Um, or the goods train. Tricky, Dad. You've got to go around the world in 80 days. You've got a lot of choices here. Uh, 80 days? We're only on day six. Yeah, I know, but you're barely anywhere. We're look. not even out of Europe yet. Well, yes, I know. That's, uh, but we're only in the Mediterranean, so we're on the way. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So, I would still prefer to go to Athens. Okay, all right. Well, shall we speed it up or shall we wait a day? I don't think we can Let's speed it up. Let's think. Now, Let's, uh, now then, oh, what, how, what, is that? what are our finances? Do we know what our finances are? Let's go. Let's let's, let's you got £4,234. Right, it's going to cost us £1,000, is it, to get to Athens? We're doing it. Oh we're my going God. On the ferry. We paid it. Wow. We had, to, we had to grease some palms, but we're doing it. We're going today. We're not going to muck around, Ed. Splendid. We've got oh to spend some money. God. That's what I thought. Good idea. On the f Hopped on just in time for it to leave. It was leaving at 11 a.m., so we didn't have a long time to argue about it. We left Italy directly, boarding a ferry to take us to Athens via the port of Patras. There we go. Imagine all those other people wanted to catch the ferry and it's just left. Yes, <laughs> it's just left. Never mind. <laughs>
Now, on the ferry, of course, you take a little bit of time to look after your master. Oh, yes. I You're just, like, massaging so. his feet. The boat yes, was crowded with little nice room day. for luggage or perambulation. Well, what did you do? Did you meet up with characters or did you stay out of trouble? Oh, I think it's good to see to, to meet the characters on the boat. It is. Mm. You fell into broad conversation with a man named Monsieur Mikos, who works in Venice but was affianced to an Italian girl from Anatolia. Mm. It is best to marry outside of one's own, I tell you, he enthused, for we are all citizens of the world now, are we not? Ah, but you do not know the men and women of Paris. What else do you, would you like to say? Would you like to say the others, or you just, what do you think? Hmm. Why do you suppose that? Why do you suppose that? I asked. Well, let me ask you this. Where are you from? Where are you from, Dad? Paris. And yet here you are, on your way to Athens. But I work in London. Oh. It's too late. It's you had the option to say that earlier, but you just went with the... What are you going to say now? Paris. The thing is, this is too slow. I know. <laughs> are you, are you going to say... What, how are you going to argue with him? Mm, well, yes. Um, Have you found love already? Mm, no. You were not intending to fall in love? No. Perhaps you will fall in love on the journey? Mm, possibly, but... Or I have you found love already? Mm, no. None of these? I can't no. say none. No, no, no. You're not, not intending, intending, to, not intending to fall in love. Oh, dear. Most oh. do not intend it, the man granted with a sly smile. But it happens all the same. Oh. He bid me good day, and I wondered what my master's feeling on the subject of international romance might be. What do you think Monsieur Fogg has to say? I'll have to ask him. Well, you, well. you can't ask him about romance. Yes, I think That's I can. Good Lord. Let's talk to Monsieur Mikos some more. So Athens, where do we want to go from Athens, Dad? Izmir, and Antalya, that's in Turkey, I think. Istanbul in Turkey. Bucharest or Alexandria in Egypt? Oh, I think um, it's uh, Alexandria in Egypt. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Can you travel there? Here's something I do know. They say Suez is at the end of Europe, but in truth, it is Alexandria. Mm. Okay. So where? So Alexandria. Are you interested in going to Alexandria? Yeah. Um, it's being rebuilt stone by stone. It seems that's all. You, that's all you managed to get in before you got there. The ferry ploughed on through the sun-dappled waters. You spent your time aboard doing what? What did you do? Well, waiting on my master's needs. Yeah, looking after him. Pressing his trousers and seeing the vigour return to his face under your Getting him a gin and tonic. He does like his gin and tonics, mm -hmm. uh, Monsieur Fogg. I know that. I hope he's got... Sure. Did he have another pair of trousers? Because if you're pressing his trousers, either he's not wearing trousers or he's still wearing them. He definitely had a spare pair of okay, trousers. Okay, that's good. Gentleman has a I think it's... Yes. A gentleman has more than one pair of trousers. Yes, yes. Yes. That is true. So your chuffing ferry gets into Athens uh, late in the day, 10 p.m. Uh, and you haven't got any time to do anything, so you're just going to explore, maybe go out for a nice Greek meal. There's the Parthenon in Athens. My master was not, as a rule, particularly interested in the fabulous locales and exotic cities we journeyed through. Athens was the exception that proved oh. the rule. His sudden interest was not limited to the city. He fixed me with a look. Do you speak Greek? Ah. Uh. I had spent a glorious summer with a Greek contortion. <laughs> oh my god! You could do the most elegant arabesque penché. <sighs> May we, monsieur? I smile, sharp, 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 sharply. Repeating a few of the phrases taught me by my paramour, Monsieur Fogg blushed for a million. <laughs> That's the kind oh. of red. That, passepartout, is a very specialised vocabulary. <laughs> oh my goodness! Despite my master's grasp of ancient Greek, the demotic variant more commonly spoken on the streets eluded him. We were reduced to doing what? Either wandering at random, or asking for directions through mime. Okay, you were miming it. Good. Um, mime. Moi. Apposite quotations from Homer and oh. half-remembered flattery. We picked our way through the labyrinthine streets of the Placa <laughs> and up the Acropolis. <laughs> where the Parthenon That's is. really funny. That is really. Can we just take a moment to appreciate that? You're trying to ask for directions, and the only way you can communicate with people is by mime, by your master reciting ancient Greece, <laughs> or you doing chat up lines. Yeah. <laughs> That's all we've got. Oh dear. Oh. Where are you going to go? Are you going to go to look, look at the Parthenon? Are you going to watch, see what Mr. Fogg decides? Or are you going to check your watch and think, oh, crack your big I think I uh, watched Monsieur Fogg. Carefully. As he looked upon the Parthenon's magnificent columns. Though his lips did not so much as twitch, he looked, for a brief moment, joyous. I knew it. 
<laughs> I knew that under that icy exterior an English mother's uh. resolve lurked a soul. It was impossible to feign such joy. As we stood admiring the architecture, I was rudely knocked into by a small man with thick glasses. I caught his arm in case he should fall. And he smiled and thanked me quickly. Well, your wallet's gone. <laughs> <laughs> my apologies. Oh, God, not again. My apologies, he murmured. What do you oh. want to say? Uh, take more in future. You need a money belt. That's what you need. The man nodded. Indeed, I shall. A hundred apologies. He put out his hand <gasps> to shake. I am Dimitri Sophos. Oh. I am the owner of <clears throat> a modest shipping freight company. Oh my god. I'm surprised. Was this the man the drunken Fiametra had been so angry about? He seemed thoroughly harmless to me. And to where do you sail? I inquired. Mm. Ah, here you go, he's giving you a pamphlet. This, the one of most interest, was oh, a boat go. sailing to Cairo, leaving the next day. <gasps> ah, yes. What do you want to do? Do you want to thank him? Ah, uh, yes, I thanked him. Do you want to promise to see him in the morning, maybe? I promise to see him in the morning. Oh, do you want to go to Cairo, Dad? Looks like you're going to Cairo. A man with sea legs, you observed. Monsieur Fogg. Still gazing longingly at the Parthenon, did not reply. I doubt he even noted a word of the exchange. It said, your character is now suave. There you go. So, you found a route through to Cairo from Alexandria. And what we can do is, it is leaving uh, at 8am. So we've got, it's leaving in an hour. If oh my god, get on it. go! Just go! Shall we go Just go! Straight to yes, Cairo. Indeed. Just go! Get on. Okay, it's a... Uh, it's a bit rough. This it's, is a um, Sophos Company ferry, is it? It's on the Sophos Company. We're not going to have a chance to even go to the market. We're just going straight off on the ferry. No mucking around. Phileas is like, it's been the happiest he's ever been. Yeah. And you're like, we're going to get a ferry! <laughs> <laughs> Come on! We found our way to Sophos' ferry terminal in good time and waved a greeting to the owner who was visiting to inspect his fleet. Paspatou! He cried cheerfully. You will join me and drink some Retsina. Have you drunk Retsina, Dad? I would, I would, but I, I cannot. Oh no! Oh. What's wrong with Retsina? Oh, <laughs> <It's> horrible! <laughs> oh God! <laughs> we must continue our journey. Sophos nodded. Of course, I will not delay you. We clambered aboard Sophos's ferry, finding some space between the barrels of olives and large packing crates that smelled of fish. Mm. Soon, the rope slipped away from its ring, and we were away. Woo! There we go. That was so quick. now we're getting on better we're with Phileas. Around. Mm, yes. Let's talk to Mistress Sophos. Oh no, it's the. It's the fairy lady, Madame Nikolai. I need to know the, about Cairo. What do you call someone who drives pilot? Tri what? So, she's the uh, what are ferry they master. I don't ferry know. master. Yeah. So, works. Cairo is linked to Aswan, but where do you think you want to go from Cairo? Do you want to go down to Luxor, Dad? You've been to Luxor, haven't you? You've mm. been to Cairo. You've been to all these places. What, um, what are the routes? What are the routes? Cairo to Beirut, to Baghdad, to Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, or to the Suez? Do you want to head down the Suez Canal? That was suggested oh. to you, wasn't it? Yes, we do. We want to go from Cairo to Suez, so we can okay. go down the canal. There is a daily road service, so that's easy. That yeah. is easy. Okay. We can handle that. that so, of course, where far, do we want to go from it? Suez? Do we want to go to Bombay? Ad Aden, wherever that is, Beirut, uh, no, Luxor. if we can get to Bombay, that will give us a chance then to go across the Pacific. Apparently there is. Speaking of steamships, I understand Walter can be reached from Madras aboard the Western Flower. And then from Bombay, you could go down to Madras, Nova Goa, <laughs> which is obviously the Portuguese colony in India. Oh, obviously. <laughs> what? Calcutta. How do you know outside. about the well, Portuguese colony of Nova Goa in India? Well, because Goa is the Portuguese, uh, Portuguese colony in India. It was it? a Portuguese for a long time. Yeah. Mm. Can we? Can we go? That's where Vindaloo comes from. Can we go to? Oh, Suez? that's why you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, can we go to Suez? Because you yes, read the Wikipedia can. article for Vindaloo <laughs> at some point in the past. <laughs> 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 you can get to Calcutta. Oh, yes, we can. Okay, good. Well, there we go. So there's there some go. more routes we Open know. So of course you can go from Cairo to Suez. You can go down to Luxor or whatever the yes. if you wanted no, to. We want to go to Suez. And we want to find out how much it's going to cost us to go to Bombay. She's filled in some routes. You see, to Bombay. And there's Madras on that side of India. And there's Voltaire. And there is Calcutta. Okay. Let's stop Cairo, coast of Africa. So you're going down the Nile now. Yes. A few hours later, the sun was lowering. The sailors were stretched out on the deck. Enjoying a moment of calm. An hour or so later, they were swarming the rigging and masts, bringing us slowly into the bustling port of Alexandria. As we came ashore, what are you going to look at? The lighthouse at Alexandria? Or are you too busy recovering from the boat trip, Dad? Yeah, too busy recovering from the boat trip. <laughs> there you go. To notice the newly built lighthouse. Soldiers and sailors had gestures for a follow. From the port, it was a short carriage ride for Cairo. You can get off here at Cairo if you want, or uh, carry on. What would you like to do? Do you want to have a break at Cairo or do you want to carry on to Alexandria? No, I want to carry on to Suez. Uh, okay, we'll carry on to Cairo and then to Suez. 
and we arrived in good time. All right. We're not mucking around in Alexandria. We're going to get a horse. <laughs> Maybe we should have stopped. I don't know. Should we have stopped? No. I think we might should have stopped because I think this thing's worth money in Alexandria. Shit. Damn it. Up. Never mind. That is fine. Should have remembered that. Should have remembered that. That's fine. Um, Sophos' ship times. There we go. So we can we can sell that. Let's sell that. We don't need that. Anymore. Yeah. We don't need the Pacific Times. Let's get rid of that as well. Okay, there we are. So, um, we've arrived late in the evening, but it looks like we can take a late overnight trip to Suez on the Bosnick car. Let's go. Definitely. We're not going to muck around. No. And from here, you're just going to go down the go. Red Sea and. Yeah. You had to leave before 9 p.m. just in time. Oh my goodness. Just that was close. Yeah. We're not waiting around. We find a private driver to take us to Suez. The journey was quick enough. The roads here in Egypt are surprisingly well maintained and the car ran efficiently. What do you want to talk about? Do you want to ask the driver how she kept it so well? Or no, I didn't want to tempt fate. No yeah. tempting fate on this one. It's like being on a bus. You don't, you don't talk to the bus driver, do you? In Suez. Okay, well, there you go. Tartan blanket. Ah! Yeah, let's sell that. 300 Wow. There we are. Jolly good. So, we're doing all right. It's day eight. We're at Suez. It's really we're late, Suez. Lewis. It is late. We're going to go to bed Goodness. before we uh, stay up till late. And we're going to uh, spend the night in Suez in a, in a little hotel. The uniformed lamplighters lit the gas lamps as the sun set over Suez, bathing the wide avenues of the city in a smoky yellow glow. Mm. What do you think? Do you wonder about the city or are you going to explore it? Um, no, I, I did wonder about the city. It's wonder, not when wonder. When the Suez's newfound fortune and wealth would prove enduring, and what would grow in place of the stylish hotels and manicure gardens, we did not. Yeah, there you go. So we can plan our route. Let's have a look. So it looks like this ferry here mm. is expensive. Uh, it's not that expensive. It's 308 pounds. We could pay That's what makes it expensive. <laughs> for it to leave for Aden or Aden. I don't know where that is. Aden. That is that that's on day? The so that saves you a day, though, doesn't it? Where is that? Is that in, is that in Qatar? Qatar? Or where is this? I don't know. I think it might be in Qatar one day. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, Bombay. That's the same one. Oh my god, and that will cost 14 us 14 days. But it's a 14 day journey through to Bombay on the Suez trip, Dad. It's a long old journey, but it, it, it will get us a long way, mm. good value, and it will leave today if we want for 810 or tomorrow for tomorrow afternoon for a lot less. This Easy. is the way that you wanted to go, isn't it? So, mm, yes. either way, you, so you can go as far as Aden. Um, for half the price, Aiden. Mm. But you know, you don't want to get stranded there. Maybe that ship will be the last ship out. Who mm. knows? You go all the way to Bombay. You could maybe take the road routes down through um, to you know Saudi Arabia. We had uh, to these places. Maybe you'll find a way to get through to um, to you know there's Dubai. Oh, so actually that that must be Dubai. So that must be more where the Qatari area is. So up here, not here. And then we've got Karachi. What, what are we going to do, Dad, eh? Well, I'm looking to get to Bombay because we do need to go around or across okay. India to get onto the Pacific. So do you want to go down through the Red Sea? Yeah, I'm going to go down through the Red Sea. I want to go on the boat to Bombay. That's right. Well, I'm going to buy up the windscarf, which is going to keep us keep us good on the dusty roads, I think, and it's just cheap, so it's, it's cheap cost. And we want to... Pack, do, we, do we want to... I, I, bought, I bought a new timetable, which will show us the routes in the Caribbean. Think. The Caribbean when we get there. Oh. Or is it where did was it Caribbean That's, or where was it? There, there was Caribbean and now there's something in South America there. Oh, we're getting some information anyway. So uh, well, there's a route from Suez to Bombay. So let's get let's to do Bombay. that. Okay, we gotta pay for it today. Do you want to go today? Oh my god. Uh, it's so much money and it takes so long, yes, but uh, it's it's you've got to do it. Yeah, I think so. Okay, we're good on bark. No risk it. On the piano uh, liner. Baking sunshine, high temperatures, oh. and mild seas. So it'll be a bothersome route, but don't worry. It's a long time, 14 days. Oh my god. So by the time we get there, Dad, it's going to be day uh, 23. Oh my god, wow. Piano liner, Mongolia. We're investing a lot into this one. Yeah. The dock was crowded with people cheering one another along. There was much chatter, many embraces. We, we of course. Ordered in silence. Ordered in silence. <laughs> no one paid us any attention. Or now, perhaps not. I fancied I sensed a pair of eyes fixed on us oh. as we made our way aboard the Mongolia. 
What is it, Dad? What do you think they looked at? Was it the sight of an English gentleman, a true English gentleman, or when you looked about, were they gone? What happened? Yeah, I looked about, they were gone. Oh, so it was suspicious. It was so like, oh. whoever had been watching us had quickly ducked away. There we go. I do hope you're not spending too much, Passport 2. That money has to last all the way around, so Phineas is a bit worried about you spending. Well, you have only got one and a half thousand pounds left now. Oh, no. Right. Well, we should have sold that mask in Alexandria. What are you going to do when you run out of money? Well, Swim. you have to um, go to the bank and take a loan. Oh, okay. And that takes time, you see. Ah. The steamer Mongolia was built of iron. Of 2,100, 800 tons burden, 500 horsepower. Oh, she sailed goodness. as grandly as a duchess out of the port of Suez. I've never seen a duchess a sail out of the port of Suez. Suez. Ah, you cried, <laughs> watching the grand hotels and guestlit gardens recede into the distance. Monsieur Fogg looked on them dismissively. There will be many more such sights to come, for we have quite a distance yet to travel. My master, I was learning, was as unvarying as the ship's chronometers. Yes, I found, uh, I confess I found it comforting. Mm. To serve such a reliable personage. Mm. Yes. Certainly he was incurious and perhaps even indifferent, but he was also dauntless. Without doubt, he was an eccentric gentleman upon an even more eccentric quest. But it was my eccentric gentleman. What were you intending to do? Well, I was determined to do my duty. Good. Relations with Fogg of Strength. Aww. So you're on the Mongolia? That's sweet. It's a bit tough for old Phileas, but you're going to press his trousers and, and keep him I'm in. I'm sorry? That's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Give him his gin and tonics. And, um, keep him in good shape. So it's gonna, we're going to stop at a bunch of places on the way, but we're not going to get off, I hope. Unless uh, something bad happens, and uh, who knows what will happen. Monsieur Fogg spent his days playing whist with Sir Francis. Whist? A tall, fair fellow who was an old India hand, as they said in the trade. It seemed uh, that Sir Francis was decent competition. Oh, there you go. A thing that Monsieur Fogg's peculiar intellect for whist truly craved. So what did you do? I left them to their games. In the knowledge, your master was duly entertained. On the evening of the second day, we approached the city of Jeddah on the gul east coast of the Gulf. Hmm. What kind of place is this? And you asked the sailor, pointing over the rail. He shrugged. Simon can read this. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> uh, I've never been. The boat sailed past, but pleasant enough, I suppose. I was taken by the sudden thought that perhaps we could put ashore here. Um, no, I shook my head. Oh dear. Uh, to clear the daydream. The Mongolia would take us far, fast. Indecisiveness was not what Monsieur Fogg would want. So you befriended an extravagantly whiskered fellow, passenger who introduced himself to you as Monsieur Fix, <laughs> and evinced a flattering interest in your travels. You are making a tour of the world in 80 days? He exclaimed. <laughs> what? Eyes wide as saucers. <laughs> yes, it is a wager. He confirmed mournfully. Do you want to read the rest of what you said to him? Uh, Go on, read that, Dad. Yes. Uh, gentlemen. Gentlemen are strange creatures and given to stranger fancies to fill their time. It's true. Mr. Fix looked suddenly rather shrewd. It must be an expensive business, all this travel. Uh, my master's a gentleman. Ah, you said repressively. For you considered it gauche to uh, discuss financial matters. Yes, of course, my companion mm. agreed laughingly, though his moustache twitched like a pendulum. Mm. All the same. A singular endeavour. Well, there you go, and you're off. Now, on the journey, perhaps it's a good time to have a little break um, mm -hmm. and have a cup of tea and a break for, for people to donate to the charity stream. Yes. Um, We've we'll, had uh, we'll a bunch of people donate and have left messages. Okay, so how, do you want a drink, Dad? Are you all right? Well, I've got a tea if there's one. Yeah. Okay, we're going we're gonna to go and have a little break. We'll have a rest upstairs. Um, well, do you want to read donations or do yes. you want to have a break as well? Yeah, I want to read donations. Okay, you read donations. Like well, I'll, go and, and I'll go and get Dad a drink. And, and you'll read the questions. And uh, a snack. And we'll, we might have a little break. We might play something. If you read donations and then come up when you're ready. Okay. Uh, and you can have a break as well. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Peace on out. Lovely. Um... Oh, there's, there's messages for his dad, that's the problem. So, so, so uh, Lewis's fail is, um, he seems to think that he's actually Lewis with this post. He says, I must say you gave your son a fine name 10 out of 10. 
And I recommend to anyone look for an extremely good name to uh, to pick the name Lewis. Amazing. Uh, Cameron Eames has left a, a poem. Remember, remember, the month of December, the Yogscast season and whatnot. I know of no reason why the Yogscast season should ever be forgot. What a beautiful poem there. Thank you, Cameron. Um, the shyish, the shyish one has said, uh, what you guys are doing is incredible. Thank you for the content you put out. It makes everything so much better to know when I get home from school, there's always something for me to watch. You're most welcome. And he says hugs, especially for Duncan and Kim. Charming, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, people love, people love Lewis's dad. They really do. Shotgun 2010, Mr. Brindley, you're awesome. Thank you for making Lewis. Flamey Kumori, love and stream guys, love Lewis's dad. Meow Mix, uh, Yogg's live streams make December the best month of the year. Um, what about Christmas? That's kind of a big deal for December, isn't it? Uh, Finland, a Finnish man. Oskari says, um, we are the best, and he's uh, from Finland. Frederick, where are we? Frederick N. Handberg, nice calm Christmas stream, guys. Great to see Lewis's dad. He reminds me a bit of Bill Nye. Bill Nye? Your dad's a bit like Bill Nye. Bill Nye, maybe. Do you think? Maybe. Think he is? Do you, have you seen this terrible jumper I'm wearing? Yeah, it's got a three-dimensional bobble hat. It's a bit weird, isn't it? It is a little bit weird. It's like I've got some sort of boobage going on or it, something. It's like you've got a strange growth there. A boobage. I hope everyone's enjoying it. What were the general... Uh, the, yeah, they effect? say uh, Lewis's jumper is brilliant. Oh, okay. Big fan of Lewis's jumper. <laughs> eight out of eight, <laughs> mate. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Oh, goodness. Uh, thank you, N. Tom, for donating. Uh, it says, keep up the good work. Tom Wareham says, donating to show appreciation for Lewis's dad taking the time to provide entertainment for him whilst doing his A-level chemistry. Oh, my God. That's the thing that's happening, is it? A-levels. Is it, um, are there mock exams now? Uh, let's see, where are we? Arrgh. Every time it updates, it moves it down to the bottom. I can read out some of the newer ones. Maybe. Lillian, Papa Zephos is amazing. Really enjoying this stream. Love from Norway. Uh, Kane says, thank you for making December month even more fantastic. Also, Lewis's dad is brilliant. Um, James Hall, Lewis's dad is the best. Bring back the gin. I appreciate what you're doing. We can't, we can't bring back the gin. It's too soon, it's far too soon. Uh, George Carpenter, OMG, you're reading this. Hi, Edward and Chandler. <laughs> Joe Barnfield, loving the streams. December is the best month. Wanted to ask a question that's been greatly discussed at my school. Did Simon go to the Cotswold School? Yes, I did go to the Cotswold School. That's where I'm from. It's my A-levels there as well. There's like a little building um, that they, they stick the A-level students in because it's quite a small school. Um, it's just like a single little building. And that was like the most modern part of the school when I was there. So that's how long ago it was. Um, and the library, they just put the new library in. Um, so yeah, that was like, God, how long ago is that? Oh, geez. I, oh, that's terrifying. 18 years ago? Oh my God. Um, Fudgy. Hey Simon, excellent work. Keep it up. That's what he says. Um, I got about 80 messages from James Hall um, because he, he just wants me to read out his message. I think he's donating like one dollar at a time. All he's doing is saying Lewis's dad is the best bring back the gin over and over. <laughs> but that's cool. Just keep donating. That's brilliant. Um, Nick Davis says hello from Cheltenham. Cheltenham, lovely Cheltenham. Well done on everything. Love you all. You guys are the best and more for me than I can ever write here. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm blocked by Simon on Twitter for some unknown, unknown reason. Oh, God. 
And then he says, I was the one that told him about penises being drawn on the curiosity cube. Oh, God. Yeah, I kind of, I think, if you have a lot of followers on Twitter, you have a very, very low tolerance for people posting certain things. So, there's like a, a hair trigger block button reaction. I apologise, uh, Nick Davis. Sorry, I'm getting a couple of biscuits from my dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> we'll be back in a bit. <laughs> How's it going? It's good. It's good. Terps is here. If you want, if you want, if oh, you Mark. want to join, yeah, yeah. yeah. want to read some messages, he can yeah. come and uh, say hello. Yeah, yeah, we got Mark Turpin, Connor Cook. Hey guys, thanks for the great content over the year. It's great to see so many people being generous to charity. Mark oh. Turpin, everyone. Mark Turpin of the Oxcast. Mark Cast. Turpin of the Oxcast. You might have heard of me from such marks before recording as three, two, one. Mark, Mark. Turpin of the Oxcast. I can't not do that. That's a problem. It's, it's it's infectious. It is. I've done that hundreds of times. Hundreds of thousands of times. What are you? What are you reading out? Just lovely donations. I'm reading out oh. donations, and it's making people donate right now. Oh, really? now I really. I can see that like donations. ticking over. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's weird. It's just like technology, because you're reading them on a spreadsheet, but it's being updated. Yeah. Real time. Rachel, yeah. these dreams are keeping me going for the revision I have to do for the upcoming prelim exams. Mm. Prelim? Prelim exams. What's prelim? I guess maybe it's what they call... Rachel, if you could donate another $5 and explain to us uh, oh my God. why, that'd be great. Let's say you get Maybe donations. it's what they call mock exams these days. Preliminary uh, exams. Uh, Ross Lang? Lang? So yeah, Have any you... relation? I think he might be... Not. <laughs> Not. No, no. no. <laughs> He's from Scotland. Scotland. Loving the stream with Lewis's dad. Can I have a shout out for my brother Colin? Hello, Ross's brother Colin. Hello, Colin. Hello, Colin. Does it, so, Hello. Can I ask a question? The artwork up there of Lewis's dad. Yeah. Did it's they, American dad. Yeah, but how do they know what Lewis's dad looked like? Because it's pretty spot on. It's pretty accurate. Do you it's, like sits there front and that, center? Yeah, that, I get that. Right? Oh, He's not right, here. No. And I'm the fucking You're fish. You're the fish. <laughs> so thanks for that. I didn't even notice that. That's Thank brilliant. You. That's really clever. That's Thank really clever. So I've not really watched much American Dad, but I appreciate how smart that is. Uh, Greg also has left a message. Um, Dearest Alan Brindle, how are you, sir? Or something, he says. It actually says a Griswold voice. I've forgotten what Griswold voice is. Hello! Yes, that one. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Try to kill everybody! That one. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas! There we go. Uh, there we what go. did you think the first day you set eyes on a beautiful Miss Rutherford's face? That's a bit. Well, I was there, actually. I'm trying to think of what I thought first. I was I the Hannah. third wheel to make sure that to make everything sure went smoothly. It's called um, it's nice. uh, being a. Not, I was going to say. Gooseberry. An escort. But a, what's, the, what's the one where you. A chaperone. Cortina. A chaperone. Oh, right. That's what you were. <laughs> you were making sure that it was all above board and courteous and. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's very good. Wow, that's an essay. Someone is trying to break it by posting the theory for relativity. Oh, I already know that. So thanks. So, thanks, whoever donated. And has posted um, a massive something to text. break. That's fine. This. It doesn't break. It's fine. Oh my god. What are we up to? Big Ginger. <laughs> hey. Big Ginger says Big uh, you guys are the best, which is nice of him. I've kind of come in. That comment was sent before I sat down. So sorry. Yeah. Vanda, you guys rock. Thanks for another great year full of laughs. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you, Vanda. Is that Khan? Khan. I like, like thinking Cam. of Khan Bloodhoof. Khan. Khan. You guys are great! Um, Can provide there are the two snakes staring at each other. We provide conversation topics for him and his friends. Oh, what do you chat about, though? Um, we were on a stream last night, you know? I didn't see that bit coming when uh, Simon did that thing. Ooh, ran exactly the that, exactly yeah. that. Fallen Chosen? That's can't Pretty be sure I've name. killed many Fallen Chosen. Fallen Chosen? That's in Diablo. Thank you. Is it? Yeah, the Fallen Chosen. Are they? Oh, yeah, the, the they red guys, demon. aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Miles, loving the stream. Thank you. George Carpenter. When I said his name earlier, he almost died. Who? Who? George. Oh, when you Carpenter. said his name. Yeah. Oh right. So you just said it twice. Do you reckon he's probably he's double dead, dead now? He's dead. I'm sorry yeah. about that. George's estate. If it hasn't been assigned to anything, I think humblebundle.com/slash/yogscast. Oh my um, god. If you could donate. 
whatever remains of George's estate. And his remains. Great. And his remains. We can probably get money for it. There's gold in, in your body. We've seen this. A uh, Polish guy has given me some mead. Oh, wow. Actual. Right. It's called and Mead Delicia. of Beauty. Ah, oh, Delicia. He loves Delicia. That is his favourite form of Jaffa. I made rude comments about Poland and his response was kindness, which oh, shows there that you he's go. the better man. There you go, exactly. Chris. This Thank mead, you. I mean, that's lovely. 13% as well. That's what, you know Fine. you're a connoisseur when you're drinking mead. It's wine, but instead of grapes, it's honey. Honey. It's the wine of bees. It's bee wine. Bee wine. Bee wine. And some people say, hey, why have the A team when you can have the B team? It's not a compelling argument in all fairness, but it's good. I can't read any of this. It's all in Polish. But if I was to try... That was, the, that was <laughs> awful, Mark. Oh, it's produced and bottled in Poland by oh, Mazuki Moody. Sounds Mazuki like a Harry Moody. Potter character. Which is nice. Harry Potter? And Hi, the, no. and the Gallon of Mead. Wouldn't and that be a great book? Mead. It would be. <laughs> it's just him getting pissed. <laughs> Come on, I found some alcohol. Oh, Harry, you silly thing. Said Harry! <laughs> Harry! <laughs> Harry, did you put your name in the complete fire? That's what the that's the that's oh the gift. Oh my god! I what like that. The hell? Dumbledore said calmly, didn't he? Said calmly. Yeah. That's Harry, the... did you put your name in the complete fire? He said calmly. He said calmly. Oh my god! There we go. Joris van den Hoogen. Okay. Says you should play GeoGuessr with your dad, Lewis. Oh, that'd be. Good. I reckon he'd be good at that. Ties into the that's scene. That's a really good one. That's a really days. good one. I it like does. that. How are you getting on in 80 days? Obviously, I've been watching the stream, but just um, give me a little quick synopsis for anyone who hasn't We're going to be up to day joined. 23, I 23. think, when the ship um, sails into Bombay. Oh, really? When um, the ship goes down. Yeah. When the ship hits the fan. But there's a lot of conversations that you got to do with people to learn, like, extra routes. Uh, or there might be someone up to no good so on I'm this just ship. Going, why don't you just go the other way around? And then you know, oh, I can go that way. And then you're like, That's oh, just, great. We, we had a conversation about that at the very start, which way around we have to go. And Lewis said, what is it called when you go the opposite way as to where the... the Stupid. Because you lose a day, don't you? Yeah, yeah, you, you have an extra day to travel if you go east. All right, okay. But if you go west, then you've got to do it in 79 days. Yeah. Because um, have you read the book? You read obviously around the world in 80 days, Phileas Fogg. And I've seen the have animated seen the, cartoon have series you seen, Willy Fogg. Have you seen the Jackie Chan, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie of and Steve Coogan of uh, Phileas Fogg? Are I think you it's called actually. Yeah, 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 This yeah. isn't a bad pun. Sam, you're Sam, up. Uh, I'm not on headphones, so I'm just going to speak into the microphone. Um, would you be able to do a quick Google on the Jackie Chan uh, adventure that was? I think like called 80 Days or Around the Jackie World or something Chan like that. Jackie Chan Adventure. Jackie Chan, Steve Coogan I think was Phileas Fogg. What's Fog. he going to do when Jackie he Chan was it? past part two. Say, yeah, that's, that's and Schwarzenegger. Real. Could you just put it up on the screen, just uh, like a, a, an image search or something, just for like Simon the poster to see. Or Yeah, the something. poster. Just because uh, I feel like he'll get a lot of joy from that. I think that it's a, there's a lot of love. Jesper Someone. from Copenhagen. Lewis speculated at the start of the game that steam cars could have existed in alternate history. But in fact, a steam car prototype was built in France in 1769. The first ever <laughs> it was on your face, Brindley. <laughs> it was the first ever self-propelled vehicle. The more you know. There you go. Putting a kettle on rails. Oh, it was called Around the World in 80 Days. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Hound. Oh, it's gone. But yeah, thank you. Was it up there? Yeah, there oh, we there go. There we go. Look at that. That's a Walt Disney film as well. Look, and he was an inventor, or I don't know so how that works. So Coogan was Phileas Fogg. Yeah. And Jackie Chan was Passport 2. Yeah. Okay. But he knew Kung Fu. And there's a girl in it. I don't know who she was. Because need a girl. But uh, there you go. Phileas Fogg. Come on. Steve Coogan. Steve Coogan could have made it, guys. Oh, he, God. He's, he's, he's so funny, and yet his... He was never officially recognised for his brilliance in America. He was in because Hamlet Because of films two. like this. Hamlet 2, amazing film. Amazing film. I love that film. Oh, God. Really good film. Anyway, sorry. More comments. Angry Boots. Hello, Yogg's cast. I'm from Bonnie, Scotland. Merry Christmas. Keep up the good work. Good work is one word. That's good. That's so how they do the it good up work. in Scotland. Saves time. So they can do more good work, like donating. Humblebundle.com slash Yogg's cast. Lawrence Thibodeau. I'm so glad Lewis's dad is on this stream. 
I fondly remember his narration of the Borderlands, oh, Borderlands. theme. <laughs> that was a long while ago. That was ago. a good video, that though, was wasn't it? a long time I was, ago. We were hoping to do the... Because there's a Borderlands uh, Telltale game, um, but this seemed like a better option. Mm. It's a more dad-friendly game. Yeah, I think so. I think this is it. And I think GeoGuessr I think would be brilliant, so good shout-out to whoever recommended that. Yeah. That, um, uh, I think there's that games was, that um, you don't have to be man. a gamer to necessarily play, and that, that's great because it doesn't put Yours his dad at a disadvantage. Who can? Because he hasn't been playing on controllers for 20 years. Oh, God. Oh, God. So, uh... Seaman Loveland. <laughs> Loveland. Oh, right, actual name, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, my bad. I thought it was spelt rude. Uh, apparently, they have ladders in Norway. Um, sorry? Do they not have ladders in Norway? They do, do you actually. Some they shortbread? do have ladders. No, I'm bringing it. Who has brought in some shortbread? Leighton Paggart, is mm. this how I post comments? Yes. Yeah. You're doing it right. Ross Kings, what happens is you donate on humblebundle.com slash yogscast. Donate five dollars or more, you get the badge for TF2 exclusive items. The only way to get it. Uh, donate twenty-five dollars or more. Yep. You get the whole bunch of games. And we should we should give a spoiler. We're adding three or four new games hopefully this week. Oh um, God, more maybe games next are week, be added. depending and if on you've how long it donated, takes. You'll get those keys as well. So you get loads of new stuff and some really exciting stuff coming. So um, better get in there now. We only get a set number of keys. So once they, unlike normal Humble Bundles, where they just have unlimited keys, and so you can buy it for $3, and that's great, um, we only get a, a, you know, nowhere near that. So we have to put a, a bundle price on there. But it's still fantastic value, but it does mean that we can run out of different games, <gasps> as we did last year. We ran out, I think, of um, Torn Banner, uh, what was it, uh, Chivalry. Oh, Towards right. the end, we ran out of and oh, stuff like that. So only the first people who donated ended up getting some of the games. Mm. But we are, like I said, adding more games, and we're trying to get more and more as the month goes on. So keep donating, but get in there sooner rather than later. And when you donate, you get an email, and in that email response that you get, you click on the link, and that sends you to where you can put your comment, and then we read out the comment. It's magic. It's the future. It is. To infinity. Um, What's this? Ross Kingsland says, Hello guys, Miney Craftmas and a Yogi New Year. I like that. <laughs> ho, ho, ho! Oh, awful. Mm. Zoe loves the live streams and wants the Yog, pa Yog Pod to come back. I'd love it to come back. Oh. It's, it's coming back soon in a form in the, on, on the YouTubes. Yeah. Well, we're going to put them all up on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. So we're uploading the, the old ones onto yeah. the YouTube. But in a, in a more accessible way, maybe some extra little bits here and there. It'd be cool. Andy S says, Happy holidays, guys. Are there any Jewish members of the Yogs cast? If so, they should have a Hanukkah stream. Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. Are they? Have, I don't know. I don't know. We don't really talk about religion much, to I be honest with you. most of us are agnostic or atheists. Yeah, generally. I think so. I um, obviously am a uh, pastafarian, so I believe in the great spaghetti, uh, whatever that is. The great flying spaghetti monster. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a colander that you wear? That, only for DMV photos and passport okay. photos. Yeah. But it's awkward because when I travel, I have to take that so they can see that it's me still. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, if you have uh, glasses, if you have big, thick sunglasses on your passport photo, you have to always carry them around with you <laughs> and always put them on. See, it is me. It is me. If, and if you have a fake beard when you have your yeah. passport photo <laughs> taken, you've also got to bring the fake beard with I you love it. See, every what, time. What happens? You put your beard on. Put your beard on. Put your beard on. Put your beard on. And then I do my photo. Ooh. Oh, what's your kiss? <laughs> oh. What do you have to do? Just, just, just. Move your beard apart. Mm. <laughs> Wipe your lips. <laughs> and then kiss. Mm, okay. <laughs> Cat films are the best. Aren't you they? shall not kiss. Oh god, those guys. You were really noisy next door. You, Mark Turpin, I can I? exclusively reveal, was recording with Hat Films. I wasn't. They were noisy then. You were recording with them. I was when I was up in your room, up in the. I can still fucking hear you, mate. Oh, you can hear me. Yes. Oh, I was quite scared actually. Oh my god. We were playing. Uh, Ross made his own game mode in GTA V, uh, where you have what is in essence zombie strippers um, armed with knives, and you have to collect a bag oh, and drop it off at, at like a kind of payload map. All the while, you're getting attacked and swarmed by all these angry strippers with knives, and then there's one who's got a minigun in the middle. 
Oh my Surprisingly God. good fun. You're locked to first person as well. It's very scary. Sounds horrible. It is quite quite traumatic. Oh my it's God. It's good. We won though. Yeah. Spoilers. Spoilers. So you don't have to watch the videos now. There you go. <laughs> Saved you all <laughs> 10 minutes. There we go. Um, wow. Matthew Wilson. Hello, Simon. You are beard is smelly, lol. Tail slips to play Factorio. Factorium again? You could do. No, it says Factorio. Oh, is that what it's called? Factorio? He also said, be. you are beard is smelly, lol. So. <laughs> You're. But thank you for donating, Matthew Wilson. Mm. Uh, Charlie Ecklin, loving the stream so much. Hope you reach a million dollars. Believe. And it will happen. Believe. You just gotta believe. Believe, guys. Um, Big Ginger again. Simon and Turp's best combo ever. Oh, there you go. What? We've Be caught up to now. I don't know about We've that. We've caught up to now. Well, well, you're in it. Don't, I'm trying to get through. Don't diss it. Get through don't diss it if you're in it. Zetch of the West donated. Um, where is he? Oh God. See, someone's posted a oh, massive wall yeah. of text. Don't do that. Thanks. What if you say don't do it? They're gonna do it, Simon. Well, it would cost them money to do it. Well, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. So, there you go. Nice you're doing it. Out, you're trolling for charity, guys. That's important. Remember, every single penny goes to charity or cent. No, they're still pennies, aren't they, in America? Uh, well, they do call them pennies. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. every single penny goes to charity. I think officially um, they're cents, but they will call them a, a penny. A single. Amongst penny. friends, colloquially, we refer to them as pennies. A one C. I've got penne actually at home, which pasta. is like tubes of pasta. It's yeah. lovely. Mm. Mm. Have a bit of that with some pesto. I had, I made a discovery the other day. Okay, I was cooking pasta at home. I was boiling up some penne and some fusilli, which is the swirly ones, um, because I had two. And you had a weird remnants. tingling sensation. No, 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 no. And then you became a man. No, no, no. No. So I was, I was, okay. I was doing that. So I boiled my pasta, put it through the colander, whack a bit of. Uh, Pesto, I said, well, a lot of pesto in the in the saucepan. Keep the heat on, put it back on, and then basically something magic happened. Okay, the door went. I put it on a low heat, thinking better get the door, but don't want to burn this. Right. Okay. I was at the door for some time. Oh okay. no. When oh, I no. came back, I was like, shit. My oh, pasta and pesto ruined. is going to be ruined. It's going to be ruined. Okay. But it was slightly stuck to the bottom of the pan yeah. after say. 10 minutes of, of cooking, mm -hmm. but the oil in the pesto had kind of deep fried the bottom layer of pasta. <laughs> so you and fried the pasta? So I basically, after cooking it, after boiling it, so it's all nice and soft and lovely, oh, I then sort of gave it a crispy, crispy shell. Bits. Okay, oh, in lovely nice. oily. It was delicious. It so the nice problem is, I don't know how to make it again. I can only think of like, I'll do it. It's out to the door. It's, it's like giant. Louis Pasteur. Or <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like Tartu Pasta. Or yeah, something. yeah. That that sort oh of. Oh my um, god. Yeah. So there you go. Wow. So um, if you want to remake uh, Terps's Pasta Pasta surprise, I don't know. <laughs> let me know if you figure it out. Let me know. But it, like I said, good. I liked it. Uh, it's kind of bad because it does encourage people to just leave. Yeah, cooking, leave, yeah, on. food and heat on. Yeah. yeah, I will. I will kind of point out. I am a trained chef. No, you're not. no, I'm not actually. Yeah. That's the point. I've trained fire marshal. So, are that, you? No, no. I don't not tell that people either. that. Okay. It's fine. It's all. It was all safe. It was all good. It's all got, good. There's a message here. Jesse Van. What's that? Rijin. Rijin. Yep. Rijin. Says greetings from Holland. If you read this, I'm going to slap myself in the face. How about instead of slapping yourself in the face, you slap your wallet out on the table, get your card out and donate again, only this time, ask for an impression. Come on, he's a man of a thousand voices. But they all sound the same, unfortunately. Well, they, they sound very you similar. Know. They found, sound That's very, very similar. Sorry. But you can't, you can't win them all. Ooh, whose arm's that? That's right, it's Lewis Brindley's arm. Ted... Can I try some of that mead? Yeah, do you want to crack sure. it open? Have you got a bottle opener? Because I think it's a cork. Really? Ted says, uh, Hi Simon, can you tell Lewis I'm sorry for killing him in Minecraft yesterday? Really? He says he, he told you to turn into a spider and then you jumped into lava. Oh, it's a cork. Uh, yeah, yeah, there is a cork. Do we have a cork screw? Cork 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 I don't know, we're not that In cultured. the kitchen. <laughs> It's a and a cutlery drawer. Oh, is there? We don't even have <laughs> there a is. Fork. There is one there. Please joke. Yeah, use the use the fork. We drink wine use in the office. Use the fork. We drink wine in the office all the time. Yes, we're very There's conscious. Uh, we have. Uh, we also have French visitors come over occasionally, 
and they you know drink wine. Thank you, uh, Kim Jong Un, for donating. That's it's very, good very of you. kind of the great glorious leader, Kim Jong Un. Thank you, R. Uh, he's been watching us since our first Minecraft you know that series. Kim Jong Un, when he came into power, do you know what the first thing he did? Had a shit. He, well, no, possibly, but after that, he banned anyone else being called Kim Jong Un. Okay. So there you go. He put apparently he had a, like officials go out and take a list of everyone, which then were there a lot of them? Well, around? apparently, but then it got pointed out as actually then all it is is just a list with a lot of people called Kim Jong Un on it. But, oh yeah. Anyway, wow. So, so he banned. compiled a list of people called Kim Jong Un. Yeah. And <laughs> someone handed him a list, and it was just, just Kim, Kim Jong Un. Just for everyone, like pages of it, and he was Maybe outraged. they should have put like addresses <laughs> or something on there. Yeah. As well, well, he should have been more specific just in something. his instructions, though. That's the problem. Oh, Obviously, they God. all died. Oh wow. What does it smell like? Can I have a whiff? Oh. It smells like wine. So. It smells like mead. Yeah. It smells like funny. Oh, doesn't it? Oh, I'm not sure about that. Personally, it like... I'm sure it's going to be delicious. Thank you, Horsey Eats You, for donating. Um, oh it wow. Like cider wine. It's been watching us for three years now. Oh, three years. Like yeah. Wow. It's a long time, isn't it? Robin Van Burricum says <laughs> you should tell Lewis's dad that Lewis has been eating bugs. Really? He's been eating bugs. Where well, have you been eating bugs? That sounds no, just I a, don't, a couple of them. Really? Can By I accident. show this up so people can see? By accident. So, he says. oh, I can't. You can't see it that way. If I hold it in front of my face, it's That's, not bad. It's quite yellowy, isn't it? It's not bad though. What do you mean it's quite yellowy? It's made out of honey. It smells like what honey. What colour? It, it smells doesn't like, smell a bit like piss. No, well, it smells a little bit like if you peed honey. If you like drank a lot of honey, ate a lot of honey, sorry, and then urinated, that's probably what it would. I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, it I don't like do meat. that, but. Tastes like meat, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, Tastes like meat. Do you want to it? I know, I know. Do you want some mead, Dad? It's not something you can drink much of, oh, mead. Shall I? Dad wants I'll, some I'll tag meat. out. All there right. you go. High five. What? All right. That was Mark Turpin of the Yogg's There we go. Everyone. Do my daily cameo. All right. Weekly. Thank you. Uh, we were going to have some food, but he's, he's not really very hungry, so we'll have some food. Uh, in a bit. break, yeah. So we've had, got do some mead now, have we? Yeah, do you want to try some mead from the Polish gift? Certainly. Nice, Dad will drink it. It looks nice, Ooh. doesn't it? Thirteen percent, Dad. So be careful. You haven't eaten anything. So when you get, <laughs> what do you think? It has an unusual flavour. One could get used to it. Oh, Dad. Stainless. You sound very polite when you say that. <laughs> True. One when you're faced with a new it. drink, you have to think about it. Well, I mean, crikey. Um, it's sort of seems that thirteen you know, percent. I know it's powerful well, stuff. So you know, powerful so you don't stuff. Go, and go um, yeah, better not too true. <laughs> I've got to. I've got a request from Matt Sparks. Oh yeah. Um, it says hello, Simon, and everyone at the Yogg's Cast. Simon, could you please say, raspberry sausage. Wow. With a creepy look to camera, please. <laughs> so go. that was that was that done. Very nearly at four hundred k. I noticed. So We've been doing good. Doing yeah, four hundred thousand dollars of donations. It's pretty good, isn't it, Dad? Thank you, everyone. You had no idea we raised so much last year, did you? No, I, I was very surprised. I hadn't any idea that you'd raised as much as that. No. I think I was probably thinking about the previous year. Oh, yeah. Uh, Time does go by. It does, yeah. I mean, that's um, a substantial sum. And then what's this 400k tonight or overall? Overall, isn't it? It's um, it's overall. Overall so, so far. far. So mm. eight days this in. This December. Or so. mm. Mm. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah. yeah. It's very good to all these people who are giving these donations. It's very nice of you. There you go. It's a bit of a bit of encouragement from my dad there. Um, thank you for donating. A lot of people are saying, um, Warren Perkins, for example, saying Lewis's dad is awesome. Um, Do you think you're awesome? I'm not quite sure what that means, really. <laughs> you're awesome, that's what it means. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jamie thinks that Lewis's dad is actually Israfel. Oh, really? Jelly says Lewis's dad is amazing. You jelly. It's incredible. Oh do my you, god. Do you want a drink of water or something? No, 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 this is fine. Really? It's very strong. All right, fine. Well, I mean, we've got a long way to go. I've got to have something to keep me going. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got to Bombay yet, have we? No. Not quite yet. No, we're still on the road. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Solve, uh, it's, his name is spelled S O L V E I G. Solve. Solve. Has donated. Solve. He, it, he tells me here how to pronounce his name. 
Oh god, it's a bloody touchscreen laptop, isn't it? The uh, HP Omen. Yeah. So I've just messed up the. Uh... Oh god, why did I poke the monitor? Oh, that was a that was a terrible mistake. Well, we all do those things, Simon. Don't worry. Oh god, thank it's, you. It's gone. It's not coming back. That's all right. <laughs> Swedish Prime Minister's donated. Really? Um, I don't know if it actually is, but I I oh I'm going to believe that it is. Mm -hmm. Swedish Prime Minister, oh, that's good. That's very kind of him. Very important person. He is. I don't think you normally okay. get Prime yeah, Ministers watching your programme, do you? Well, you know. Um, Lewis Barling says, uh, when can we expect the Lewis's Dad Dota stream? Do you know what Dota is? No. Um, it's, it's a computer game oh. in which uh, people kill each other and they say rude things. Do they? To each other. Let's say you're terrible at games. <laughs> Stop playing them. <laughs> Don't ever That's play it. this game again. They yeah. say that kind of thing to each other. Okay. I'm not quite sure whether I want to play that game. It's I, like um. I don't fancy the idea of killing people. It's like five v five and stuff. So there's like you know five friends. Mm -hmm. Friends playing against five other I see. friends. I see. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. And the friendships are ruined if if. Uh, people don't do well. Mm, right. It's a very aggressive game. Um, Lewis and Hannah play a lot of it. They do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> There's something quite addictive about it, I think. Um, I'm not quite sure that I fancy that, actually, Simon. A very popular game. Uh, Jorgen Holland says, i got to say it's awesome to see Mr Brindley on the stream. Yeah, yeah, when, will you be see when will we be seeing your father? He's busy. I'm sorry, he's <laughs> Oh, God. Um, yeah, almost at 400k. Got a few people pointing that out. Scottish Billy and Jack Syrett have pointed that out to us. Mm -hmm. um, Jarl Goldberg as well, thank you very much. All these people who've donated. Mm. Very good of them. There is some water. You need that. Sebastian LaForest says, I hope this is how I comment. If so, I've watched each stream for the Jingle Jam so far and they've been amazing. But by far, the Hat Films has been the funniest. The Hat Films, the hat they are films. the best. Are they? They certainly are. I think Terps needs to be in more video. Yeah, whatever. We don't. They're not very interesting comment. <laughs> <laughs> Terps need to be in more video. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So, uh, Corey Campbell wants me to wear the pig hat again. Oh no. Um. Oh dear. Should we? Where is it? Uh, no, it's over there. It's too heavy though. You'll, you'll, it's smash, all the, you'll there. smash it up. You'll smash the room up. It's a disaster area. Alex Q says, uh, "Happy holidays for everyone at York's Cars, especially Lewis's legendary dad. Oh, You're legendary, legendary now. Oh, my goodness me, what have I done to deserve that title? Good night. What goodness. have you been saying about me? Oh, only good things, Dad. Oh, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> they're enjoying it. That's good. All the best things. It's nice to have you here. I mean, yes, it's uh, it's different. What 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 kind of things do you normally do? On I Christmas? don't normally do this on uh, no. on a Monday night." I'd probably be at uh, one of my meetings of the Wildlife Society in, in Onga. What do they do? Well, they have lectures uh, about the, the, the import speakers about talking about various aspects of wildlife. It's thrushes. Uh, and then we have trips out. Right. Visiting wildlife reserves. Bird spotting. Bird spotting. Yeah, bird, real birds, you know, the, flower, the, fl the flying type. Yeah. Birds. Yeah, that's so interesting. Hmm. Terrified of you leaning back on these chairs because they're basically made of plastic and cardboard. They're like no, in that case, I better, I better not lean <laughs> <laughs> back. <laughs> not that you need to be worried. No, it's fine. I've, I've, we've weight tested them with Terps and Simon, so mm -hmm. it's fine. You should. Oh, well, if Simon's it, tested, it's okay. Yeah. Well, quick. They can, they can stand. Well, Simon that. only broke Look at that there. Perhaps it isn't okay. Look how wobbly <laughs> the back of the chair is. I think you've got a good one. I think you'll be right. Yeah. I don't when you fall out. Oh, I've got you. I've got you. Have seen my shirt? You've seen the shirt I've got on today. What is it? What is it? Like a Some pirate look. cat. Oh. It's a pirate cat, right? A salty mm. dog. But it's uh, it's a cat that's eaten the, the parrot. So it's got the parrot's feather oh, in its mouth. It's 
got a patch on his eye as well, yes. Yar. Right. Arr, me hearties. Arr. That's cats. It's all about like cats. a cat. <laughs> it's a special time of Christmas for a uh, cat. Special cat. A special time of Christmas for cats. <laughs> what do you get? What do you get a cat for Christmas? Simon, 2014. <laughs> what do you get a cat for Christmas? It's not a cracker joke. Oh, it's a shame. Could be. If it, if it was Mark, I'd be like, oh god, give me coming it. now. He'd like, uh, oh my god, presents. Uh, nice presents. One of those bananas that's got catnip in, it's probably good. They like that. You just throw that at the cat and then they run away from it. And then they slowly creep towards it. And they grab it in their paws and then they just sort of roll around. <laughs> it's catnip. <laughs> it has a really, really odd effect on them. Dear Mr. Brindley, did you see Lewis's impression of you? Did you do an impression of your dad? I don't think so. No, I did, really, perhaps I did it uh, sort of unknowingly. Yeah. yeah. Mm, frowning. I don't know how to do an impression of you. Yeah, very difficult. It's basically me, just the, in, in 50 years. Being different. In 50? Wait, what? Hell. So you, your dad is not 50 years older than me. That's you. not true, no. 30 years. <laughs> Lord. And that's generous. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Louis. Oh, Solvay is a girl's name. Sorry, Solvay. I've got to uh, say that. Josh Waldecker says, Happy holidays from Bristol. Oh, good. Bristol, Tennessee, that is. Oh, oh Tennessee. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, God. So, yeah. Um, Got a lot of requests. Another one come in from Overlord that we should maybe do a GeoGuessr later. That'd be a good one for your father. But we'll see. We got to get through eighty days first. Haven't That's we? true. We're still on this. Um, I'm just catching up with the boat to Bombay. Yeah, it's probably it's, it's eight probably going to take us eighty days to finish it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe. Can I have my uh, blueberry Jaffa's back? Yes, Can I have a blueberry Jaffa? Blueberry Jaff, Jaff. Thank you. I need a bit of energy to keep me going. Oh, yeah. Go. So, shall we, shall we cut back to the, the game, if we can? And um, okay. resume our, our mission. So, we're still on the boat on the cruise ship. Mm -hmm. The, 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 um, the PO mm. ferry. Mongolia. Mongolia, yeah. Mm -hmm. On the way to Bombay. On the way to Bombay. And. Um, when you see the screen again, you will be you will notice that uh, you've woken up one morning and at breakfast you saw a young, bronze-skinned lady in a lilac day dress, scribbling in a notebook. Her eggs and smoked mackerel, uh, untouched on the plate. But apparently, I've just been told via the medium of post-it notes stuck on the screen here. Uh -huh. It's a note. Um, it's a tiny notepad. That's opened up by Sam, and, it and says, in it he's written. We're just about to hit 400k. Oh my god! Dollars. So there's going to be some like achievement spam come oh, down and like right. fireworks. Have we got? And a, have we got a graphic for? Yeah. Have we got a graphic for? What, I haven't yeah, even got an will. earpiece in, so Sam could be saying anything. Dad's got earpiece, is not he? Have oh, what? No, never mind. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Uh, what a magical moment! There we go! Dun, 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 dun. Yay! Thank you, thank yeah, you everyone. Excellent. Oh my god. Can you believe wow. they're probably playing some music now that we can't hear? It's like we're supposed to be dancing. Down, 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 Oh, okay, that was nice. Thank you. Thank Woo! you, everyone, for donating. Get the dishes in. We'll resume the game. Look at that a bit. emote spam. I think we need Good to do. God. We need to get on with this adventure. Okay. Um, but that is fine. If if it is still even working on the screen, I don't know. We'll get a piece. Of, we'll get a post-it note that will come up and say, <laughs> "Can't see the game." Oh, it's broken. <laughs> it's broken. Oh, there, oh, there we are. Okay, there's your ferry. It's all going well. So you met this? You saw you saw this young lady. What are you going to do, Dad? Are you going to go up and talk to her? Uh, well, I decided to introduce myself. Okay, cool. Um, Bonjour. 
And what are you going to do? Are you going to say, are you going to use every gentlemanly courtesy or are you going to express your curiosity about her writing? I think I am. I think I'm intrigued by what she's writing, yes. Okay. She shut oh. up her notebook violently and oh. slipped it into her lap. Oh, God. My words are my own and none of your concern, she hissed. <gasps> no. A I letter think. to your lover, perhaps. Mm. Oh, my God. You smile disarmingly. <laughs> Go on, to say what you uh, say what you would say here. Oh uh, yes, well, um, I'm I'm a Frenchman. Uh, I don't know. Only further entangled a moment later. Oh okay. You said I'm a Frenchman, demoiselle, Demo demoiselle. So I have a nose for such affairs. But she says, you're wrong. You could not be more wrong. <laughs> And you were you were only entangled when her father arrived. Oh his my name God, was Monsieur Williamson. Eleanor, who is this man? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> my name is Noah, she said firmly, and this man is no one of consequence. I am sure you will find him most congenial, father. And with that, she swept away, leaving me to explain myself oh, to her beleaguered parent. Oh dear. Well, that didn't go as planned, did it? No. <laughs> you should have been more courteous. That was that was the thing, wasn't it? But this is a long journey, Dad, and maybe you'll bump into her again. Are you uh, seeing to Willie Fogg? Yeah. Are you like combing his hair there and you stuff? Go. You happened upon Demoiselle Williamson in the piano room on the boat, where she was studiously ignoring the music and merriment in favour of her notebook. Oh, Demoiselle God. Williamson, we meet again. Uh oh, we've only got ten percent battery left. Oh shit! That means that this might be a short game. Oh my Sorry god! Sorry about the language, Dad. <laughs> uh, can we speed the boat up a bit? Yes. <laughs> the lady held up a finger to bid me wait a moment and then finished her sentence. Oh, it is you. What are you exactly? She says. An adventurer. Really? Ooh. Are you? And what would you say if I confessed that I too am an adventurer? Ah. What would you say, Dad? I would say. How did you? Come to be so. She gave me a wry look and lifted her notebook. I learned to write stories, Passepartout. You may be trapped here on this hulking steamer, but I am wandering the catacombs oh. of Egypt and unearthing its marvels. Wow. Am I in your notes? <laughs> you egotistical. Perhaps I will put you in my next adventure. She favoured me with a smile. Perhaps the heroine will encounter a fellow adventurer. Well, there you oh, go. You made a friend. You made up. Can you play uh, shuffleboard with Good. her or, or something? Sh sh shuff hate me. No, it's <laughs> shuffleboard on, on a. What's cruise? shuffleboard? Shuffleboard. Shuffle aboard. Um, right? It's like curling, yeah, I think. Right. On a board. Yeah. Mr. Williamson offered yeah. me a pipe full of tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> I am perplexed oh. by my daughter. I am perplexed by my daughter. What do you think? She says. What, uh, is what is so perplexing? Okay. I asked gently. She does not behave in the manner of a lady at all. She told me last night that she, that she has been writing penny dreadfuls for this past year. She is His published. Oh gosh, <laughs> she had as much told me yesterday, but I pretended surprise. What do you think, Dad? You must be very proud. Oh, okay, sure. Aww. Cheaply printed tales of horror and adventure were indeed a London fashion that had quickly spread. Indeed, the most popular stories were set in Egypt mm. and Africa, and I had little doubt that Demoiselle Williamson had added her own inventions to their number. <laughs> oh, <God>. What? <laughs> it is a scandal! She has broken her engagement because she has independent means! Wow. Oh, no! Perhaps then she will find her own husband. You suggested. Monsieur Williamson's neck turned an unsafe <laughs> shade of purple. <laughs> But anyone with a penny may now read her most intimate thoughts wantonly printed upon the page. Ah, perhaps you should not read them. Oh, oh. oh my. Indeed, I think I should not. A man's heart can only break so many times, but what oh. oh, dear, dear. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> what a strange <laughs> overreaction to it. Oh, dear. Wow, this Day is 18. Oh, good. We're on the way. It's How news. much battery have we got left, Lewis? None. We're, we're, we're gonna, it's going to collapse on us. Instantly. Are we on fumes? We're running on fumes. A slim volume had oh. been sitting on my door in the night, oh, bound with a ribbon me. and a short note. To a fellow adventurer, here is my latest volume. 
I picked up the cheaply bound book. Titled Adriana and the Lost Sarcophagus of Thebes. Ooh. Hmm. What are you going to do? Are you going to read it or are you just going to... You've got plenty of time. You've got like another yes, five uh, days on the uh, boat. Uh, no, I opened it at the first page. And Adri oh, it's the whole book. Oh my god, we're literally reading the whole book. Adriana Herawi was no ordinary lady. While other girls of her age and background took up watercolours and practised their scales upon the piano and dreamed of matrimony, Adriana dreamed of sun-bleached cities and featureless deserts of yellow sand. Oh god. I settled in to read Miss Williamson's novella until my master awoke and required my services. Oh, we've got a charger. We have a plug. Sam, to it you are a hero. Is it actually going to, is it working Will though? It work? This it thing, it's made it's a promising noise. Sound. It's made a promising sound. We will, I we guess will, we'll hope for the best. We'll find out. Oh God. Well, demanded Demoiselle Williamson, what did you think of my story? Adriana is a charming creation. I only wish my father thought so, she sighed. He read my volume last night and believes Adriana is merely a cipher for my own passions and being. Oh. Ah, you are both adventurers. Okay. Oh. Hardly. Adriana has visited over 15 countries. She has risen cat riddled camels and horses and wrestled a crocodile while in her nightgown. Oh, goodness. Hmm, there is some invention at work, though. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed there is, though my father doesn't see It's it. not autobiographical. He believes Lord Havering to be Adriana's lover, and now suspects that I am concealing my own paramour from him. Oh. Lord Havering is the villain. He is Adriana's nemesis. He is utterly misreading the text. You, hmm. What are you going to do here? Hmm, such are the dangers of authorship. There you go. No doubt many will misconstrue your words in their turn. But Havering thoughts Adriana constantly, and is condescends to her at every turn. He even threatens her with a rapier. How can such a relationship be misread? Demoiselle Williamson dug into her venison savagely, <sighs> muttering of interest, interfering fathers and irresponsible readers. Wisely, what I you said nothing. Yes. There was clearly nothing that could be done for this unfortunate father-daughter pair. <gasps> uh, what are you going to do, Dad? Are you going to just... Uh... Well... Lock them in a room together. <laughs> With Bombay being so close. Now was not the time to attempt any risky reconcilements. Yeah, God, oh my who God. knows what could have happened. There could have we'll been some there. drama aboard the Mongolia. Hmm. We're going, going in a comb his hair. Yeah, I'll give him a... Give him there we go. There we go. Quickly comb his hair. <laughs> I am not Much appreciated, Sir Francis declared with cheerful glee towards my master as they dealt another hand. I am taking the train to Calcutta on important business. Mm. Oh. I believe we will head that way ourselves. Ah, well, there you go. Capital! Sir Francis <laughs> exclaimed. And even Monsieur Fogg looked passingly pleased. He might even perhaps have said as much, except that just oh, then, no. infernal Monsieur William stormed in, threw a glove at me, what? and bellowed a challenge. <gasps> I looked at my master in confusion. Dad, what have you been doing? But he merely lifted one eyebrow and glanced back at the gentleman in question. Go on, Simon. You are Lord Havering, and you have led my daughter astray. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I God. did not look at Monsieur Fogg's reaction to this. <laughs> <laughs> the revelation his valet was a lord might be a bit <laughs> too much for him. Do not try to deny it. Uh, monsieur, Lord Herring is a, he is a fictional character. Aha! He picked up his glove and tossed it once more. <laughs> you have read her text, you blackguard! <laughs> and yet the way you spoke together, you acted quite the charming innocent. He I... drew his arm back and made a fist. <laughs> I threw myself on the floor! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, not wishing to engage in fisticuffs like a dockside brawler. Equally, I had a powerful urge to protect my delicate, cherished face from his oh. British fists. <laughs> Dad, he tripped over me and we tangled together upon the carpeted floor. Oh, goodness. Miss Williamson, what is the name? What in the name of Ra and Osiris is going on? <laughs> she shouted, arriving at that unfortunate moment. She seized her father by the armpits and dragged him away, muttering various unladylike curses. As I dusted myself off. Monsieur oh. Fall regarded me with a remarkable aplomb, given the scene which had just proceeded. You would tell me, would you not, <laughs> if you had outraged any ladies of late, Passepartout? He remarked. I nodded neatly. 
trying, if possible. Oh no! To regather my coffee. Oh no! Oh dear. It's all right. Your, your relationship with Fog has deteriorated ever no, so slightly. He didn't think much of your um, <laughs> no behavior. getting carried away with these women on <laughs> you boats. You kept to your cabin on the last day of the journey to avoid any repetition of the previous evening's debacle, but you could not avoid Miss Williamson as we dim- disembarked at Bombay. She, mm, she clutched her hands to her bosom theatrically as she spotted you. <laughs> Goodbye, my dear Lord Havering, she called, <laughs> counterfeiting a sickly, love-struck smile. I will never forget you. Nor are you, my Adriana. <laughs> yeah, he's playing you along. <laughs> a rakish smile. <laughs> then you disembarked into the humid, salt and smoke-laced air of Bombay. Oh, Bombay. In India. Indian, cue Indian music. All right, well, nice. it's nine o'clock in the morning, early morning. Let's see what they've got to say or hear. We've got the Penny Dreadful. Which sells in Canton for hundred dollars. People love it there, apparently. Nothing else of any value. However, what we can do is we could conceivably buy some of these things if we wanted to. Do you want to buy any of these things? A zoetrope? What's this? Uh, valuable in Bangalore, Madras, and Colombo. That might be useful. Let's grab one of them. I think this oh. is probably. Have we got the false passport we didn't sell? Yeah, let's grab the false passport as well. Okay, we'll grab a bunch usually of Usually gets a lot of yeah, money. Yeah, you need to sell stuff to make any money because mm. your funds are pretty low. All right, what have we got here? So, we are in Bombay. Now, this is. Oh my the god. Great Indian Peninsula Railway, which mm. leaves tomorrow for a great deal of money. So I think, regardless of what we can do, we can explore Bombay for a day and see what we're doing. Okay. Okay. So Good we'll idea. Do. And uh, maybe there will be an alternative route that will be faster or sooner. Aha! Uh-huh. So there is an alternative route through okay. Bangalore to Madras. Monsieur Fogg had not a straw for the wonders of Bombay, but gave me a few hours leisure as he settled to his luncheon. I ended up wheezing and puffing my way up Malabar Hill, the highest point in South Bombay. I paused at the top Mm. and looked out at the bay. British airships dominated the skyline, tethered loosely to the gunboats that patrolled the docks. Brightly pensioned merchant ships darted into the harbour, eager to unload their cargo before the light faded. Catching my breath, I found my steps irresistibly drawn towards the hanging gardens, which shielded the par sea tower of silence from Mm. the bay. What did you think, Dad? Would you like to investigate the tower or the hanging Mm, gardens? Well... The tower was an odd structure. A circular construction with three concentric rings within, which the Parsi dead were exposed uh, to the air. This mm. was their custom. It was altogether macabre. Well, I, I, it's altogether rather macabre. Mm. Though I felt as much the same about the cemeteries where the dead gently rotted in the earth. And in the shadow of the tower, I saw the symbol of the copper lily on the door of a converted mansion. I steered clear. Oh, I finally made it back <laughs> to Missy Fogg. Yeah, good. Oh, you coward. Right. So what two. have we got? Well, we could head off today by the looks at 4 p.m. So in two minutes, if we want to go to Bangalore, do we want to go? Three, two, one, let's go. Oh, no, too late. Oh, oh my it. God. We missed it. We missed the train. Just missed it. Oh, we, wow, crikey. Oh. Well, there we go, Dad. That's what happens when you, when you tilly-dally. Yeah, we missed well, the train. We, we, we're not really sure that we want to go by train, are we? What are the alternative routes from Bombay? Well, tomorrow an agent we, we can, can take, take Sir. Remember what's his name? Sir uh, Sir Francis said, "I'm taking the train to Calcutta, so mm. we could go with him." Mm. But obviously, it's um, a bit of a journey. It takes us through Allahabad, mm-hmm. uh, although it does leave in two days' time. It's a while waiting around mm. a long time, aren't we? Mm. I mean, unless we want to leave tomorrow. Well, if we go down to um, Cal, uh, hmm. wait a minute, Cal, this, this two Calcutta's on this uh, map. Is that? No, it's not. Okay. I don't think. I think money is the problem, isn't it? Money unless is you it. make a bit of money. I'm going to go to. That is uh, Madras, Dad. Madras, and that's Calcutta. Yes. Well, how much is it to go to Calcutta? Uh, it will be a whole almost, almost 390 pounds, but it, it leaves in two days' time. Mm. So we'd have to wait around in Bombay for a day. Mm. 
Well, that departs in two days' time, so we've got to wait for either of those two No, this one departs in two days. This one will depart oh. tomorrow at 4 pm. We missed it today. Mm -hmm. Just. Um, and this one. Oh, crap. So, well. Could have, could have got crushed quickly to Madras. Well, I don't know. But then again, Madras down to. Um, Surely expensive quite... going to um, Madras. Mm. It is. Now, we haven't got any mice, so what, since we're waiting here two days, what we could do is stay overnight and then visit the bank. I think we'd need to, to have a cheap hotel. Okay, so what I can do is, if we... I'm sure there's like a YMCA or there's something. There's a hotel, yes. Yeah, so this leaves travel at 3 p.m. in two days. Premier Inn, preferably. Wow. So, um, <laughs> we'll have a day here. And then, as night fell... Oh yes, OK, I think this is jolly good. Have, hey. a night, have a night in India. Are you going to give your serv master a service, or are you going to engage another guest, or do you think you'll... He's you'll doing all right. He's better if you're polishing there. shoes in the lobby and maybe... Right, I think cash. I've got to polish his shoes and dust his shirt down. Yeah, OK. You've earned uh, 86 pounds and some tips. There you go. Um, mm. There you go. It's so... Earning 86 pounds, well, that's good. Mm. So, uh, fog is in roaring haste. Um, but we'll health. Knowing health. Uh, how, do we, how do we advance forward in hour? I can't remember. There's a way to do that. But basically, the market's just about to open. So we're going to look at the market. Oh, we've already bought everything from the market. And we crack it. <laughs> so what are we selling do, anything? We're going to have to wait for an hour. Um, sorry, until the bank opens at lunch. Then what we can do is we can actually take a loan out. But it takes a day to get the loan, you see, to get it approved mm -hmm. from London. So it says bank opens at 12 a.m. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's midnight. Um, no, yes. it's, uh, no, no, it's 12, 12, 12 in the day. How do I, how do I yes, it should time? say midday or midnight, shouldn't it? Well, that's midnight, though. 12 a.m. is midnight. Oh, I've, I've forgotten how to... There's a way to do it. Where well, it? they work differently in those funny countries. Maybe they do. Okay, so I can advance time forward a little bit like this. Okay, so let's go to the bank. Now, it takes two hours to go to the bank. We must visit the bank, Mr. Ford declared. A robbery, monsieur? Or we have <laughs> so what we want to do is, he says, I'm a gentleman. They would extend me credit if required. Do you suppose I put my entire fortune into a carpet bag under your supervision? Of course. I did not answer. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have money in the bank. You just haven't. You didn't withdraw all your money. So we can get you see a thousand pounds tomorrow, or we can wait three days for three thousand or five thousand in a week. See, so what we can do is. Ah. If we ask for a thousand pounds tomorrow, it will come in. You see, tomorrow, and you've got to return to the bank tomorrow to get your funds. Now, the difficulty is, is that we it takes a couple of hours to go to the bank, and this train, I think, leaves at three. Okay, so we can go to the bank oh. at midday tomorrow. Oh god! And then grab the money. Queue. <laughs> why can't why, no, why, why don't we go to Calcutta and go to the bank in Calcutta? Well, we can, but then we'll have to wait a day in Calcutta. We will have to wait a day anywhere we go. You see, the mm. bank gets wired to the particular bank yeah. that you visited. Ah, so it's another night in, uh, well, all right, another night in uh, Bombay, and I can earn some more money polishing shoes. Yeah, yeah. I well, you have to pay for have some, hotel. Have some mix, yeah. have some potatoes, have some sapphire. Well, let's have some Bombay duck. And duck. Mm. Ooh. Okay, so we want to go to the... Do you know what Bombay duck is? Uh, shark. Shark. <laughs> I don't know. Is it, is it actually a duck? No, no. It's pota fish. Potato, though. It's potato. Mm. Bombay duck is a potato. Do they shape it so it looks like a duck? <laughs> is it mashed potato no, no, that they moulded? It isn't it? carved in the shape oh, of a okay. duck. Okay, so we no. got our thousand pounds, and then we are off on the train to Calcutta. Go. Okay, we dug that nicely. The that Great nice. Indian Peninsula Railway. Yeah, oh my yeah, god. god. Now, we, we, we spent an extra day in Bombay, but we did manage to get a little bit of money. Uh, we went with Sir Francis to Bombay Station to buy our tickets through to Calcutta. The clerk who took our money counted it out fastidiously and then recounted it. A ticket to Calcutta, Sahib. Four days. No faster way in the world. What about airships? Oh. oh. Burn. Airships are fast, yes, of course. But they are not as opulent as our train. What do you think, Dad? Do you look forward to the journey? Or do you think some airships are... <laughs> oh, some are very comfortable. You've never been on one. You will see comfortable. You've never and been on one. <laughs> you will wake up so a new what? man in Calcutta, <laughs> Sahib. She gave you an edged smile. I should have known she was lying. But we boarded the train of blissful ignorance. 
So oh. maybe something's wrong with this train. Greetings, Monsieur Rajesh. All right, so we know. What, so where do we want to go from Calcutta? What do you think? Do we want to head up? Um, where, where are we headed from Calcutta to Rangoon, maybe? Uh, in that, isn't it? Oh Rangoon? God, Rangoon? I don't is that, know. Is that in, is Burma. That in Burma? Yeah. Minor, minor, more now. Okay, um, so. Are there any route? Are there any ships going from um, from Calcutta to Hong Kong? We don't know. We no, don't know any of the routes. Hasn't actually told me. Chittagong is probably on the way, isn't it? And there's Rangoon. So there's no trips from Rangoon apparently. Where is Hong Kong, Dad? Around no, here. Singapore. Up there. Up there. Somewhere up here. Is that Hong Kong? Yeah. yeah, yeah. From the neck, that's miles away. I know. It'll take us ages to get there. Dad, well, it's it? either boat or airship or. or Train. Oh, the train started with a sharp screech, but entirely punctually. We shared our compartment with Sir Francis. My master made no secrets of the circumstances of his journey, and our new friend clearly thought him entirely devoid <laughs> of common sense. <laughs> a reasonable judgment. Yeah. <laughs> Which I personally shared. <laughs> Indeed, I had rather hoped that Bombay would be the terminus of our journey, but we were plainly whirling across India at full speed. Our wager was now in full swing. Yes, I was beginning to worry over delays. Oh dear. Mm. Both on obstacles, both imagined and real. Monsieur Fogg's cool headed demeanour seemed incroyable, but it made me mm. admire him all the more. He's very, he's very stolid, isn't he? While stiffening my resolve to aid him in winning his wager at any cost, I <laughs> slept fitfully. And there you go. An uneasy you're, feeling. You are a good, you're a good manservant. You are. You could. Yes, 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 yes. Um, that's, uh, I've, never, no, no, I've never played the manservant before, but it's obviously an interesting mm. uh, role. <laughs> Today, Sir Francis told me of the regions we were passing through. Monsieur Fogg, who was not travelling, but merely describing a circumference, preferred to reread his edition of the Morning Post. So he's not really interested in the fact that he's going across the world, he's just... Mm, yes. It's weird. What, why kind of, would he make the bet in the first place if he wasn't interested in travel? Well, he's, he's just, he's just, you know... He's just, I want this to be over like. with and I can get my money from that guy. <laughs> it's just, it's weird. What do you think, Dad? Well, I you listen... You listen eagerly to, to his bloody stories of Aurangabad, capital of the Mughal Empire, Aurangzeb. Oh, my and God. rock cut temples, ancient caves of Ellora, which had Buddhist and Jain inscriptions as well as Hindu. Mm. So Francis is obviously an old, you know, an old hand, mm. an old Indian... Mm. It sounds yeah. mysterious. It does. And dangerous. So Francis shot me a serious look. There are rumours of Kalibak, <gasps> the forests Not of Jharkhand. Not Kalibak, no! They are devotees of Kali, the red-tongued Hindu goddess of death. Oh, God. I've heard rumours that these devotees Isn't have been the cause of Don't some recent sort of disturbances. Tongues. What kind of disturbances? So Francis sighed deeply. They have been murdering travellers. Oh my! Leaving the corpses on display as a grotesque warning to the British Raj. Uh, 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 is this a reason? <laughs> yeah. I felt a certain trepidation about our route. The Kalibakts operate in the territory of the independent Maharaja of Gwalior, governed by one of his liege Rajas who died last month. The Raja's death was the start of all the trouble. Sir where was wait? Where was that? Where? Where? And Are we, we going through it? Into a I don't know. I think that, it it's looks like it. <laughs> oh my god! Mm. Mm. The train conductor woke us up as he passed along the carriages, carriages shouting, "Passengers will get out here!" Monsieur Ford oh gave god, me a this look. could be it. And this so could be it. Uh, I hastened outside and found there was no more track. Uh, um, what? Apparently, Pegasus had been somewhat overzealous in reporting the railway's completion. Wow. The track was altogether missing between Allahabad and Calcutta. Oh, Sir God. Francis looked quite ready to knock the conductor flat on his oh, back, God. though my master betrayed not the slightest hint of dismay. I asked the conductor, who merely shrugged and pointed towards the minarets of the city. Everyone must organise the road transportation, he said, cutting wow. through demonstrations. A boy... Not long out of short trousers, uh, so I've skipped that. Directed us towards a mechanical elephant. What? What did he say? Well, we don't know, because you just, you just skipped it. There seems to be no departure today. We need to explore, apparently. Yes, we do. Well, now we're stuck in Allahabad, ah. but there is a train to somewhere in the middle of bloody nowhere. Benares. Oh. 
He was stranded. Alalabad was a charming enough town, though not, it must be said, a desired destination of ours. Beyond the city limits and between us and our goal lay the forest of Jarkand, populated by tigers, pythons, elephants, and apparently bandits. Oh my god, you can't go, you can't Mr. go that Fogg way. was his usual phlegmatic but self. But I could not share his calm. I am a man of cities, not the jungle. Oh right. god, what the hell are you going to do? Right, well... You have to, you have to have take that route. A oh my god! Elephant. How much money? For three thousand seven hundred pounds, if we want to take that, or a donkey cart <laughs> <laughs> to Benares. Which would you prefer? Which leaves in two oh, days. Oh, two bloody days! And there's no bank in Allahabad. Oh, we god. can't get any money. Uh, mind you, it's only forty-six pounds to get there. But where do we go from there? Oh. Nose, you'll have to find out, you'll have to explore it when you get there and have hope. We, have we still got this uh, timetable of the R Indian Railways? I'm or did we sell it? That was what was on the timetable, the, oh, the, the, the non existent. You bought a ticket to a place that the railway hadn't even built a line to. We, we ought to demand a refund. Well, no. the train's already on its way back. It drops ah. you off, chucks ah. you off, and now it's, it's on its way back left. to Bombay. <sighs> We can sell this stuff. We can't even sell this stuff. No, no you can market. just drop it on the ground. There's nothing here. This is no bank, no market. What are you doing for dinner? I don't even know. There's a donkey cart that leaves in two days. Is there? A, is there a spudgy like at least? This can be negotiated for a lot of money. Other potato restaurants are available. This thing. Actually, no, they're not, are they? Three thousand nine hundred pounds to get on the mechanical elephant. Yes, that's outrageous. Yeah, outrageous. It's outrageous. You don't, you don't have, can't you don't do have it. any choice here. We haven't any money. You just got to wait and then take a donkey cart into the jungle where there are bandits <sighs> that will like kill it. you. We took a room and settled in, and I engaged in another guest in conversation. We found out what I could, but gathered little oh. that Mr. Fogg would be interested in. And this isn't looking any better, guys. This is looking terrible. There's a mechanical elephant, but it's far too expensive. We can't afford it. Can't mm. afford it. Mechanical elephant. And this How in fact days? Elephant. We're stuck in El Alabad. Unless so we want to pay for it to go today, but I don't know. No. We've got enough money, have we? We, need, we might need the rest of that money to get. We have to wait another day in El Alabad. So we've got a donkey cart to Benares. Disaster. This is a disaster. We have to take a donkey cart. Yes, well, I see no alternative. Oh, From there yeah. we walk. With the last light of the evening, I went to stretch my legs and fell into conversation mm -hmm. with a cheerful Gujarati artist who was searching for a dog, dog, which I found near a dog kennel. The artist thanked me, and as we talked, he remarked that the last market in Yandadabon, Yadanabon, has closed. Mm -hmm. I asked him how he knew. And he launched into a long and complicated story about his mother's uncle's favourite language. <laughs> a convoluted tale and not one suitable for relating to <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. We are getting now, on the donkey cart, guys. Here we go, donkey cart into the jungle, where bandits are going to kill us all. This yeah. is going to be good. What an exciting adventure. Right. Taking now, a cart through dense jungles was fairly clearly, I think, yet another error. That we did it for the sake of a few thousand pounds fills me with shame. We didn't have enough money. That a gentleman should, should choose to throw a bet. Oh, for such a sum. For I am quite sure throwing it is what we were doing when we made that decision. Oh no! Oh, it's not going good. Oh dear. You're, you're brushing his moustache. Oh dear. That, you know. Oh my god, this is taking. The wheels oh, of the god. cart came off. Fixing them took an hour or so, <laughs> and every man of us was forced to join the work, <laughs> Mr. Fogg included, rolling up his sleeves and raising his eyebrows. Oh god! The, the work was muddy and hard, and once done, the cart ran no smoother than before. And uh, my oh, master, this is awful. Yeah, we should have pleased. got. We should have. This is a disaster. We should have got off at Alexandria and uh, sold that. Oh, I'm going to regret that forever now. Today we stopped in a small village of busy locals. Now, bear in mind there are bandits around who will kill you. Okay, mm, just so bear that in mind. We stayed close to the cart uh, and did not exchange a word with anyone. Oh dear. Oh my God! Poor look at him. So when he's, out, he's getting Phyllis is not happy. That's right. We're in the city of Benares. The road is so bumpy and potholed I can barely write. Briefly we pass through some kind of festival. 
In the distance, oh. through the trees, we made out dancing figures and smoke and fire. Oh, it God. seemed most intriguing, but before we could see exactly what it might be, it was lost between the trunks once more. Thankfully, the journey was almost over. Our driver has begun to smile with his one tooth, hoping, I think, for some kind of bribe for his great service to us. Mm, I cannot think why we should pay such a thing. And sure enough, when we arrived, we did not. Oh. What a Did it come to this? Riding in a donkey cart. Oh. Well, it's 2 p.m. Oh. So let's go market. to the market, sell this false part. So oh, that's good. That's good. Stetson hat we can pick up, which is. Well, this might be worth something. Should have gone well ten. How much can we sell the false passport for? Let's, um, let's see what we can get rid of actually. Mm. Uh, that's worth stuffing Madras and Cumberland. Nothing. No, it's not worth it. So a lot of this stuff's not worth anything. Cowboy boots. Sure, we'll get rid of that. No. We'll get rid of, oh, actually, that's um, that American. No, oh, I don't mind. Oh, it's a get... different set, even though it looks like it's from the same one. I think it's a different set. Right, so... You're going to have to explore and find routes. too late, let's explore. Don't want to have to do that tomorrow morning, do we? Aha! Right, there is a mechanical elephant. Oh god, elephant. that's the wrong way! No! The Hindus believe that to die in the sacred city of Benares is to achieve salvation. Uh-oh. I am not, Mr. Fogg observed, at all <laughs> certain. That holds true for non-Hindus, so I do not <laughs> recommend testing the hypothesis, uh. Paspartu. Hmm. You gave me a pointed look. And I nod in fervent agreement. <laughs> I am utterly you know, you know, I am utterly cured of any need for adventure, you assured him. From now the most the most boring gentleman gentleman a gentleman could ever wish to have. <laughs> if adventure so much in your direction, you will give the cut direct and no mistake. Oh. Mr. Fogg looked for a moment as though some kind of spasm had come upon him. What happened? What are you going to do? Are you going to give him a what? handkerchief or are you going to thump him on the back? Yes, I thumped him hard on the back. Thinking he must be choking. <laughs> and he made a small cut off sound of exhalation before pressing a fist against his lips. After a moment, <laughs> he straightened up his cool mask once more That's firmly in place. That's Patu, strange. You are the most singular valet I have ever encountered. Now do fetch me a cup of tea. <laughs> I often wonder about that moment. In I the often course. wonder about that moment in Benares. Are all English gentlemen so inscrutable, or have I chosen a particularly strange example of the breed? I guess all of us. Oh, at least, right. uh, wow, well, we've got... That is awful. That is... Oh. What is this here? Can you see that? Oh, it's another player. What? So a different player was on day 29 on some sort of crazy airship or something flew flying by. Crikey, and they're on, day, they're on the same day as us, so that's where they are on day 29. We're not too far behind. So back towards Voltaire. Oh, God. It's 330 bucks on the train. That can leave tomorrow at 8 a.m., though, so we can get on that. Mm. Or we've got uh, a horrible, the, uh, horrible is elephant. That an elephant. Is that the really expensive? Mm. Yeah. Oh, maybe not, though. Maybe we can't get on the elephant. Maybe we can only get the train out. I think we can only get the train out. Oh, no. Okay, that's fine. We'll get the train back and get back out of this flipping hell hole. Oh, my God. As night fell, what are you could do? You could attend to Mr. Fogg or you could explore a little he's, bit. He's no, a bit... no, no, I can't explore. I might get shot. Yeah, uh, he's a little bit rough. I think I'd attend to Mr. Fogg. He needed that. He did need okay, that. Okay, now the market opens at 7. I can. Did we look in the market at Benares? Yeah. We did. Okay, cool. <sighs> well, We've already been there, haven't we? Mm. Let's make sure we depart in time. Okay. For the Walter Express. Uh. Oh, um, brilliant. We'll have to pay for an extra luggage, but that's fine. We can, we can pay 13 bucks for it. That's not much, is it, actually? It's fine. Gosh, what? Another bloody train in mess. India. Oh, God. Don't worry. Where's this one going to stop? We approach the station with some pleasure. The sight of a well-fitted-out train carriage soothes the soul. Ah. As I loaded myself, Monsieur Fogg, and our cases aboard... I asked his opinion of the route. He looked indifferent. It is the speed that counts, and not the furniture. <laughs> Still, once sitting in it, he seemed more relieved. This would be a chance to relax. Thank God. Oh. You're going to have a gin and tonic <laughs> on the journey? Back on the way, finally. Crikey. It's been a bit of a journey, isn't it, though? We travelled in a compartment with two Kashmiri women holding babies and quite clearly discussing my master and me in their native tongue. What, uh... What takes you to Voltaire, ladies? 
We are going to be wet nurses to one of the ladies at the British Residency, said the younger girl with a smile. I hope she is kind. Mm, I'm sure she will be. Oh my god. You said reassuringly, being sure of no such thing. Still, <laughs> it seems to complicate the ladies a little. It is only, we were wondering, is your wife not travelling with you? Um, why do you think I am married? But Sahib, you are so well dressed. Who presses your clothes if not your wife? Her companion leaned in. Aren't you a little too old to be a bachelor? Well... She knows you, Dad. <laughs> I, I press my own clothes. He said firmly, ignoring the impertinent remark about your age. <laughs> you are as hale and vigorous as you were as a 21-year-old. But don't you wish to be married? Mm, not really. Oh, well, you don't have time. Oh, well, okay. You're pretty much married to Phyllis. Unless your fog oh, emitted so. a cough which sounded suspiciously like a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, uh, that was a nice little chat with some Kashmiri <laughs> ladies, wasn't it? Crikey, you're heading no, down to cheeky, Walter. aren't they? We arrived early next morning. The ladies nodded farewell and stepped from the train. Monsieur Fogg and myself somewhat stumbled. The infants had been less than docile in the small house of the night. So they kept you up all night, the babies. That's what happens with babies. They cry. Mm. Ah, the geometry Oh, my Should God. Valuable here. So, uh, yeah! Uh, oh, it's not much, but it's something. It'll do. Uh, poor old Fogg's having a bit of a tired day. Let's, we'll wait until the market opens. Do some exploring. Look at the plan. So, we've got... We can go back to Madras. That looks like the only route we've got at the moment. Well, yeah. And let, much good. You might open something up, though. Yeah, I will, I will wait until... Um, the Far East. I'll, get, I'll check out the market, see if we can buy anything good. I wonder if we can sell anything. Oh, I sell, sell anything. Sell that junk. Hmm. Don't, don't we sell anything? Yeah, well, what have we got? We can sell this. Yeah. Oh, it's not worth anything. No, okay. not oh my god, that was worth so much money in Alexandria. Know, that would, that no, would have allowed us to. Oh you know, god. 82 pounds, yeah. Well, we've got some linen trousers for warm climates. That might be useful. A safety harness for heavy storms. Oh god. Useful. Some mm. loaded dice. Oh, I don't need those. And Stetson hat. Fine, we're having those. We're having those. Let's explore Voltaire. I've never heard of Voltaire before. No. no. Ah! Really? Look at that! Look at that! An airship to Rangoon. Oh! Oh God! How much does it cost? <laughs> oh God! Exploring the busy streets of Voltaire, I found myself lost in the sights and smells of two cultures. The buildings of Europe, with more roughly stacked dwellings and shop fronts nestled between them. Mm. It was its own place, of course, not truly either, and I wondered. How long such a hybrid could last? As I returned mm. towards Monsieur Fogg, I passed a large building, set behind a high wall with an ironwork fence. Mm. Mm. I paused to peer Ooh. through the gate and heard from inside a blood-curdling scream. Ah! <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> I looked about for the source. Oh, you know, you rushed forward, Dad. Of course. Be brave. I, I like forward. this. I like the this. Gate. But the gate was sealed. That's right. And you could not enter the yard. A man was crossing the path, pushing a blanketed figure in a wheelchair. He paused to regard me coolly from behind his spectacles. What is this place? Uh, this is the Meadow Hall Hospital oh, for the criminally insane. God. You would do well to move on. <laughs> With that, he turned away. The figure in the chair leant back to peer at me. And I saw there was nothing but a girl. Oh. Her eyes were wide with a plea <gasps> for help, but then the chair was spun about, and she was pushed but, towards but, that forbidding building. But, the, the, ha, ha. I know. Oh, oh my God! We're down to five. Five percent battery. I oh know this isn't good. Oh God! <laughs> so the Bengal tiger leaves for Rangoon for a thousand bucks tomorrow. We can oh, quickly God. go to the bank and get another thousand if we're quick though. Yeah. So let's get a bank. Let's go to the bank, drop in. Yeah. I fear we must once again make a demand. Yes. On the bank. I regarded the manager. We will have, oh, we're going to get seven oh. bucks tomorrow. Oh. That's okay. Yes. The funds will be ready tomorrow. All right. We'll be able to collect okay. some money. And That's fair enough. Have a sleep, get some money, and then off on the airship to Burma. Burma. Is Rangoon mm -hmm. in Burma? Yes. An airship to Burma. Behind the Mem Sahib's pinched smiles, the British residency where we dined was in utter uproar. The commissioner had been packed back off to London in such haste that a replacement had not even been chosen, much uh, less dispatched. A uh, family emergency, perhaps? Surely such a venerable, powerful figure would not have embroiled himself in something so tawdry as a scandal. 
Madame Lefeu, the assistant commissioner's heavily pregnant wife, dabbed at her eyes with a handkerchief. And to think, he a peer of the realm, she exclaimed in genteel sorrow. Still, I suppose he was Scottish. Oh, my God. I leaned closer and affected an interested expression. Oh, you, you want to know the gossip? Hmm. As Madame Lefeu rang for more tea, which was served by consummate skill mm. by Barnu, a dark-skinned Indian servant in a yellow sari. Poor Lord Thonic, we British must resist native vices and dissipation if we are to civilise this country. Wow. Now, surely the natives also have virtues. Good point. We can learn from, I asked quickly, hoping she would not notice the impropriety of my question. Poor Lord Thunnock, she repeated, dabbing her eyes anew. And poor Lady Thunnock too, oh, of course. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, I caught Madame uh, Bahanu's eye and followed her from the room. Can you can you write me a letter to Lord Thunnock, said oh. Madame Bahanu. Oh. Um, why do you wish me to write to him? It is not for me, she sighed and put down the heavy tea service on a mahogany table. Lord Thunnock's lover wishes <gasps> to write him a note. And Mrs. Lefeu will oh. not hear of it. Oh, yes, I will help you. Oh, you promised. Madame Barnu seizes your hand and led you away from the residence through a maze of half-cobbled streets and brightly painted shop fronts, selling little clockwork Buddhas and Lakshmis and Shivas with intricately painted faces. We darted down the back alley and slipped inside a small wooden house. The inside was dim but draped in yellow and orange silks, which did not quite alleviate the dinginess of the establishment. Madame Barnu pulled up short. I must tell you, she said, casting her eyes down. Amru is, she is a hero. In my incomprehension, she continued, her voice holding a note of warning. She was born male, but she is now a woman. You will treat her like any other lady. Uh, hmm. This is a common practice here. It is not uncommon, Madame Barnu replied, before turning away. Amru, I found someone to write your letter. A woman with long black hair and beautifully cold eyes emerged from the inner room and embraced Madame Barnu before thanking me prettily. Madame Am Amaru's eyes were red and puffy behind the makeup, and I can see her it's nails her were bitten. I bet you it's her daughter. Madame Barnu made her sit upon the bed. Shall we write this foolish letter then? Amaru said with brittle, brittle brightness. I will not break the lady's confidence and tell you the consequences of the letter. Oh. But Gentlemen. I conversed with her a little as I wrote it. Do you hope to reconcile with him? I asked. I have no hopes, she said fiercely, only that Percival will not suffer too greatly. He asked his wife for a divorce so that we could be together. I should have known it could never be. He could have stayed with you. And abandoned his queen and his position, she asked an eyebrow. I love him because he is too honourable to do such a thing. Her mm. equanimity shaped me. I hope he is worthy of your devotion. I handed her the letter and she held it lightly between her fingers, as though it was something infinitely precious. Madame Barnu took me to the residence and thanked me again. She handed me a little enamel charm in the shape of a blue eye. This will protect you against the evil eye. Oh, nice. Thank you, madame. You said gravely. I returned to an irate Monsieur Fogg, who demanded oh you know, where God. you have been. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been doing, Dad? Uh, I've been performing a service for a lady. I do not know why I asked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 he knows what you're like. Come, yeah. It is time to go. You slip the little blue charm into my pocket. Oh, a wha what? And hope to board off any evil gazes turned our direction in the little scandal-riven colonial town. He might have just thrown it away if he found it in his pocket. Or, you yeah. know, not appreciating mm, its potential absolutely. value. Okay, so we get our funds at 11 a.m., guys. Yeah. And we're going to be off on the airship. And remember, this blue-eyed charm should fetch a good price at some stage of our journey. Yeah, well. If you get there... Oh my god, yeah. Okay, let's get our fun. What's Careful. Oh yeah, just the rubbish. Oh god. Don't worry. We've got to get the timing right. Mm. Don't worry, I'll wait till 11. All right. Oh, actually, I think we'll be all right. I think it's not until 3 it leaves. Right, let's go. Bank. Funds are ready. We collect our funds. And the bank oh my god, look at the time! Look at the time! Go, 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 go! <laughs> 120, Bam. it's 130. Go. Ah. Oh. There we go. 
Oh no! It's, yeah, it's an airship. Look. It's an airship. It, it looks, looks like, like a, a ship. Yes, it's, but it's on a cloud. Yes, that's very, very indifferent. We boarded <laughs> the rather unimaginatively named Bengal Tiger just as it was about to depart. We always leave on time, Captain Joshi harumphed as the painter was dropped, and we quickly stowed our bags what? and ourselves. The painter into was dropped. A cabin. Let us see if you can even be early. He cried as he went below. Indeed, we can. You just watch. Oh. Then the engines were fired, and we took off across the water. And maybe it's just a normal boat. I thought it was an airship, but it's not. I thought it was an airship. Looks like we're just on a steamer. <laughs> oh. It turned out that was a bit disappointing. I was hoping yeah. to be an airship. We are pounding across the water at a terrific rate. I took my mind off the heat. What did you do, Dad? Hmm. Um, I, I attended to my master's state. Really good. Intending to shaving him. Oh. And he perked up rapidly. As the evening came He gave on, him a shave and he got happy. The crew brought out the vinyas <laughs> and tablas and began to play boisterous tunes. Soon there was a good-natured rivalry between the men and the women. What did you do, Dad? Hmm. I cheered on the women. Okay. Oh my god. Only for the men to decry me as a traitor. And wow. I began to dance ever more elaborately in retaliation. <laughs> I cannot say who won the match, but my dreams were underpinned by the sound of a hand striking a tabla in a wild rhythm. Okay, look at where we are. So we're out across it's, the Indian it's Ocean. It's taking its toll on Phileas. Yeah, yeah he's uh, getting a bit, of, uh, a bit of stress. But we can yeah. chat to the captain of the ship about Rangoon. So where are we heading from Rangoon? To Hong Kong you wanted to go, didn't you? Yes. I don't know, but the quickest way to Hong Kong from here is through Beijing, he says. Okay, so we might have to go to Beijing through to get to Hong Kong. All right? Okay. okay. Beijing. Well, um, then Phineas Fox at the time, it was, of course, uh, Shanghai. Wasn't oh, it? and he's telling us we can go. What was it? No, no, it's two different places. What was it? Before Beijing. Mm. Peking. Oh, mm. we used to call it Peking, didn't we? Peking, yeah. This is the Andaman Sea, I was told by one of the deckhands. And we called it that, there. but did people in Beijing call going? it that? <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, she advised. They see a monster prowls Rangoon Street, what? devouring all those with evil thoughts. What? Hmm. I thought myself in considerable danger. <laughs> what? <laughs> we you have evil thoughts? Few hours later. Good grief. We made our way. Passport too. All right. The zoetrope could do as well here. Let's see oh. Then. Oh, well, you know, it's alright, okay. isn't it? Uh, what have we got? Market. We've got some Indian airships. Time well, table. that's a bit. No. Like three pounds. We've got a Buddha's tooth. What's this? What is it? The vendor assured me otherwise, this is most definitely not a surviving tooth of Buddha. <laughs> and some whiskey. Oh, there we go. Do we want whiskey? Get there? the whiskey. No, whiskey. Do, you a, do you want a Buddha's tooth? It's very strange. No, tooth. No. Mr. No. Strange. We don't want to load his dice. Hey? So we've got some routes here from mm. Novoros through to Mount Elbrus to to Turan. Well, we passed this. Already. Yeah, this is not so a great deal of help. Are, so what are the routes now then? Mm. Oh, this is going backwards. We don't want to lose these routes, do we? Where have we go? Bangalore. Bombay. This is no use whatsoever. No, no. no. Oh, we could have gone to Colombo. Over here. Where is this? Chittagong. Oh, oh it didn't link up. up. Oh, no well. value whatsoever. So let's explore. So we haven't got any routes from here. Mm. So we right. can go overland to Yadabon. Yadanadabon. Oh! Or all the way down oh, to my. Batavia in Indonesia, I guess. Rangoon still bore mm. the marks of its capture at the hands of the British in the last Anglo Burmese War. But in the following decade, King Pagan had transformed. From a bloodthirsty tyrant to a statesman capable of recapturing Pagan. Rangoon, crushing a rebellion by his British sympathising half brother, and winning <laughs> the love of his people. A feat of not inconsiderable diplomacy and the cunning. Also, apparently, he's got a big army. His Majesty's, mm. Her Majesty's government had been utterly flummoxed by the reversal of fortune in the region, and Burma had become something of a national shame in the London press. I had taken a mere two steps from the veranda of our lodgings when an enormous shadow darkened oh the street. Oh my god! I turned to run, but was nowhere was near fast enough. A heart beat past, and oh. I was seized in a great iron claw. It's the ah. monster! I went limp. Wasn't that the correct response when faced by a rampaging automaton? Or perhaps I was thinking of a bear. The ground fell away in a dizzying rush. The automaton was not flying precisely, but rather leaping with a powerful bunching of hydraulics and gears. I closed my eyes and clung. Oh, gosh. So at the top of a pagoda. He climbed you to the top. 
and the automaton was an enormous gilded iron lion with a heartbreakingly human porcelain face and torso. What? Its mane was made of strands of uncooked ruby. It could what? speak. Yes. Worst, oh my god. Uh, it could speak. I am Masu Manusiha, it said in a grating rumble, and you are in my city, Jean Passepartout. Oh my You know my god. name. You didn't even know your name. <laughs> my distaste for my Christian name over <laughs> <everybody. laughs> I know every creature that comes here. I am the protector of this city. I know the whys and hows of every creature that passes through my domain. But your purpose is a mystery. Uh, uh, we are going round the world, you declared, but with far less than your usual gusto, <laughs> aware you were of the long drop that awaited you if you chose your words without care. The world mm. is a dangerous place, Manusa just said, grinding its iron teeth in a horrible smile. And you Europeans only make it more so, wherever you go. Oh my god. So, so you are a watchdog of the king? Uh, I am an imperial advisor to King Pagan, and no simple collection of gears and levers. Mm. What do you want to say? Yes. Okay. Who's your master, or who made you? What are you more interested in? Well, yes. Who made you? <laughs> I was once a royal child's toy, a man-eating lion with cushioned teeth and emerald eyes. But there was some spark in my shard that allowed me to build, to create myself. I cannibalized the other toys in the Imperial Nursery. I oh bit and soldered and scratched myself into being. So, you are your own creator. Mm. I have only just begun. Enjoy my city, Jean Passepartout. But when you leave, you will go to Pang Sao Pass. Uh. And Where? do what? <laughs> it seized me in its warm paw once more and leapt to the street in one heart-stopping bound. Oh my god. By the time you had finished shaking, Manusija was gone, his last ambiguous words echoing in my head. I wondered how much of the Kingdom of Burma's recent change of fortune could be ascribed to the protector of Rangoon. I wondered whether the people of Burma would one day proclaim themselves subjects of an automaton king. I tried to forget what I had seen. <laughs> <laughs> you did that too. So, ah, uh, oh, pass. oh, strange New roots discovered. Wow, what have we got? She so, seems to think that you'll go north. There is a pass. There is an airship, the Flying Chin, heading out of towards Batavia <gasps> tomorrow at one p.m. We could take that. Well, what's the other route he's talking about? A hired, a hired Chin in two days, going out that way. That doesn't seem... Or well, the Garuda departs for Pangsa Pass tomorrow at 8am. Tomorrow at 8am and go to... It seems Destiny wants you to go there. Or at least a giant robotic lion wants you to go there. Yes. What mm. a strange night. So... Um, we need to make a quick decision here, I think. Well, <laughs> I went out well, to explore the streets of Rangoon during the cold evening, but I could not shake the strange, prickling sensation of being watched. I thought I heard a low growl through the darkness. But you couldn't be sure. Stairs watching you. Okay, well, what do you want to do? So, yourself. where do you want to go, Dad? Um, the, do, we, uh, do we know where we're going to go from Pangu Pass? Nope. This will leave this at 1pm. This is, this or is. the Pangal Pass will leave within the hour, Dad. You've got a choice. Quick. Uh, well, I think we've got to go down south. Right. Oh! So you're not, Sod the lion. You're we're not going south. Listen to the lion Definitely. on Garuda. It looks like um, it's free, though, and it's leaving in half an hour. It's free? free. Yeah, it's a free journey. Yes, but where do we We don't know where it is. We could, sir, we could be lost. Lewis wants to go. Do you want to go? No? Okay, no. we're not going. We're going to go south. We're going to go south. Yes, we're not going we'll to go south. Crazy lion. We're going to leave for this. Tavia. Or the flying chin. Um, okay, if we go. Oh, oh not my god. Around. That's the airship. Uncomfortable conditions. Poor old um, Fog's not going to like it though, is he? Oh, we well. took a flying shinth, a Leograth-styled airship with enormous hammered copper wings from Rancun. Oh. The passengers were Burmese troops who were guarding a mysterious chest in the cargo hold. Oh. As I departed, I could not help wonder if Man Nusiha would wreak revenge on us for ignoring the instructions, or if his threats had been empty all along. Back. 
He gave uh, Phileas a fresh shirt. Look how fast we're going. No, no. We're tearing through. Wow. That is crazy a fresh fast. Fresh shirt, superb. Engage one of the opposites in conversation. Is this a safe forward conversation, or are you being posted to a table? What would you like? Yes, are you, uh, are you being posted to Batavia? I asked genially. No, no said the second lieutenant. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh. Oh, said the second lieutenant. Oh, uh, uh, are you on holiday then? No, he replied again. <laughs> oh. He turned away. Well, thankfully I did not have to bear the That's silence nice. for too long as we swooped over the magnificent vista of Batavia. No. Oh. <sighs> I saw why the Dutch called it a uh, Verhaven Stadt. The exalted city, for the fort floated above the swamplands below, melting into haphazard settlements. Is it a floating city? <laughs> no. Is it literally a floating city? Well, Some of our possessions can be sold here. Yes. Safety harness. So I think, uh, I think, uh, I'll, I'll... Oh, the battery's gone. And there's the battery. Perfect. Okay, Time well, for a break. That is then. Time, for a break. time for a break. Off you go then. Um, um, Oh my god! Thank you very much for watching everyone. Wow. This is what happens. We should have charged this iPad. Um, is Mark Turpin around? I don't know. What I'll do is I'll take... I think it's because... You know why? It's because it we've got charge all these when it's cables in going in and it doesn't charge well. But while I'm plug this, we'll plug it directly into the mains for a bit. And then maybe we can get enough juice to, um, carry, on. to carry on in half an hour or something. It's all time right. for some food, Dad. All right, okay. Can have some dinner. Are you enjoying the trip? Are we signing off then? Yeah, we'll sign well, off for now. We're not. Well, are we signing off or are we getting someone to uh, oh, what, carry Mark, on the stream? Is Mark here. <coughs> we, might, we might see what we can do. Oh, this, this is what I happens, know. Dad. Is he here still? Who knows? Probably not. Don't know. Hello. Is he Thank you for donating, everyone. We'll we'll have a break. We'll be back in half an hour. We'll read some donations then. We'll just play some stuff until then. You can wait, alright? They need to get some food too. I can't watch some. Oh, God, it's ridiculous. Ah. I've only got as far as Batavia. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What day was it? Uh, about 30. Oh, no, we've got some days to play with then. I'd say we're about third of the way around the world. A bit behind, probably. Yeah. It's been rather haphazard so far, hasn't it? What did you expect? You know, you're in charge. Yes, indeed. Of course, uh, I suppose thinking back to that time of the uh, century, transport was a bit haphazard. It was a bit haphazard. Hmm. Yeah. Particularly if you tried to cross the land. I haven't done as well as we would have expected it had we been going by a boat. You'd think boats would be better, don't, wouldn't you? But mm. they're expensive boats. Mm. Pretty slow, too. Mm, I always, uh, always thought that tramp steamers, tramp steamers were fairly, fairly cheap, but of this, fortunately, we don't have any tramp steamers around. Unfortunately. That's right, I think we're doing all right. I think we're doing all right. Doing all right. Mm. Mm. Oh, how's the mead? Yes, it grows on you. <laughs> it's a bit. It's a bit strong, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. I'm glad you're mixing it up with a bit of water. Ah, oh, uh, I think Perkins bought some microwave Sainsbury's curries. If you want one of them, it sounds horrible. I know, but. Could eat biscuits. Can we have some. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go and put one in. Mm. Have a sit down. It's very pleasant. We are live on the internet, I'm waiting for you guys to donate money to charity. Mm. Good time. Good time to do it. Do you want to say anything to encourage people to donate to Empolio? Now. No. <laughs> uh, do it. Well, I was um, hoping that some people might uh, ask some questions about uh, oh, yeah, people polio. Probably, people probably are probably are asking questions. I can look them up, shall I? Mm. Ah, let's look them up. Ugh. There. Let's get this. Oh. 
Why isn't this plugged in? Oh my god, everything's gonna go off. Nothing's plugged in. Alright, what have we got? Tommy Arola says, um, Merry Christmas from Finland. Great. Uh, <laughs> I can't, there's no mark. He's gone. He's gone home. He's gone. Could you describe your mead, Dad? Could you describe it for me? Mead? Yeah, your mead. What, can you describe it? Yes, it has a, a bouquet. Which is, which is an attractive bouquet. Really? Mm. It certainly is sweet, but strong. Okay, sweet but strong, like And certainly like unusual, me. this is a certainly unusual taste for me. I uh, haven't really had uh, any wine that tastes quite like this before, but it no. is not pleasant, not unpleasant at all. Does it remind you of, um, you I know... Could, you know, I could quite drink this. They used to drink it in fantasy times, didn't they? Mm. You hear them drinking it in, in um, fantasy books, so let's get the mead out. Yeah, it tastes like I thought it would taste. Um, fun fact about Pirate's Eye Patch, they didn't use them because of the loss of an eye, but so that one of their eyes was accustomed to the darkness below deck. Oh, it's an interesting uh, thought. It's an interesting thought, isn't mm. it? Interesting thought. Definitely. Um, Mr. Brindley, your voice is very calming. And I feel it's perfect for reading out Christmas stories during a snowy evening beside a warm fire. Yes, that's rather nice. Yeah, well, okay. it's, it's very kind of them to say so, isn't it? Yes, I shall perhaps have to read one at Christmas. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of Christmas stories. Question for Lucy's dad, what do you think of your son playing video games for a living? <laughs> Yes, I don't think it's my forte. You don't think it's it's your forte? Not my forte, no. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Shout out from Brazil, from Daniel Tanabe. Thank you to Oscar Redman. He's watching with my wife, Elide. Oh, my goodness. Um, thank you, Camo Bob. Love your dad, he says. That's very kind of you. Squid Lagerstrom. That's a nice name. There's all sorts of stuff coming in. Um, thank you to Rob Tildesley and Ali Suriel. We run an improv comedy troupe in Glasgow and love watching what you do. Keep up the great work. Oh, that's right. Thank you very much. Joshua McGahan says, I just want to take the time to tell that Lewis's dad what a great pass he he's playing and how awesome he is. There you go, Dad. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, dear. Uh, hi, I'm just currently revising for my physics A-level. Tell me, Mr. Brindley, what is a gravity? What is? A gravity. A gravity? Mm -hmm. a, gr a gravity? Mm -hmm. hmm, I'm not sure that I know what a gravity is. No. I know what gravity is. What is it? The uh, pull of the earth. Well, there you go. But uh, what is a gravity? Yes. Is it, is it some sort of food? Uh, boy, it sounds like something you would be quite filling. Hmm. Mm. I don't know. No, neither do I. Uh, good. Uh, thank you to Barack Obama. He's donated. Do you know that? Barack Obama. There you go. Greetings from all fellow Americans, he says there. <laughs> Put five bucks in. <laughs> Cheers, Barack. <laughs> good lad. Uh, greets from Holland, from Frank. Good lad. These have just come in, these ones. Barack Obama mm -hmm. literally just donated. See, this is the, see these green, green lines here. If anyone donates from right now, Yes. It goes in those green lines. Okay. It gets filled out. You see, it's all digital. Mm -hmm. So we've had 13,000 individual donations so far. Of course, oh. this sheet. 13,578. Mm. Uh, see, so there you go. Musa Musasui says, $5 for Jujubees, please. I don't know what that means. Uh, Captain Cryptic. Hello, Lewis and Mr. Lewis's dad. His name's Alan. You call it, well, you can call him Mr. Brindley. Do you, do you think Mr. Brindley is okay? Mm, yeah, I mean, I don't mind Alan. Oh, yeah, he's quite casual. Um, can we have an embarrassing story about Lewis from when he was a child? Embarrassing story about Lewis? Hmm. Yes, but I don't think I ought to say it. Oh, yet. I don't mind. <laughs> oh, I don't mind, Dad. Go on, let's have one. 
have a good story. What, 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 what's your what's your earliest memory of of, of me? My earliest memory of you is being born. Okay, how was that? How did that go down? Oh, it's jolly good. I it was quite easy, enjoyed was it. it. Oh right, you didn't it know. Was, it. No, I thought it was jolly good. I I remember the nurse picking you up and holding you upside down. Yeah. And you were yelling. Was I? Yeah. And that was good. It was a good thing. It was a good thing. Yeah, yeah. we need you need you we need you to yell. Yeah. Obviously things were okay with you. Yeah, it was, that was a very fascinating moment. I must say. <laughs> wow, that's a really that's good. All right, that's uh, that's not really that's not really embarrassing, is it at all? So that's no, good. but it was, like it, it was it was a good moment. It was a good moment. Do you so do you remember like taking me off on holiday as a as a as a kid? You know, off to, oh, off to all the places yes, we were yes, off. Yes, taking we used to go all around the world, didn't we? Well, we used to do lots of things. We went uh, abroad a lot, you know. Went to Rhodes and Crete and Rhodes, Crete. Mm, yeah. Three, the three islands in the Mediterranean, the Spanish islands. We've been to all three. Oh, yeah, Ibiza. Ibiza, yeah. Clubbing. Yes. clubbing. Well, no, we didn't do any clubbing. You were too young. It was before clubbing, really, wasn't it? Yes. Um, that was a good time. Yeah, we went and we always, I mean, our holidays were always kind of quite, we, we did stuff. We wandered around the local towns, didn't we, and climbed up mountains and looked at old ruins and went into we caves. And mm. There was a yeah. cave where lots of people were burned to death or suffocated, remember, in Crete or something. It was a bit morbid, in Crete. Yeah. Yes, well, of course, it was occupied by the Turks for a long time, and uh, I'm afraid they didn't get on too well with the, with the Crete, Cretans. Oh, my gosh. Did you see that video where I was dressed as my grand? No, I didn't. You didn't see the one I was dressed as, na as a granny? Are you talking about the one when you were trying to get um, a briefcase? From yes. Someone? Yes, I did see that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I thought, I thought you both played a good part, you and Simon. Yes. <laughs> 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 I thought it was quite amusing. Good. Do you think I... Do you think, do you think that You played a good part, Lewis. Yes. Thanks, Dad. Yes. You know, with a grey wig on and a, and a dress. Can you shout out to Cup of Milk, Dad? Cup, cup of milk, just shout out. Cup of milk? Okay, thanks. Good job. Uh, Dusty Pickering says, um, Merry Christmas from Canada. Lewis, what was the best Christmas present you remember getting from your pa? I remember oh. getting a uh, one Christmas day, coming into the lounge and being told there wasn't, wasn't a present at all under the tree. And I thought, oh my goodness, what's this? How come I've not got nothing? And being led out into the garage. Mm -hmm. And in the garage was this incredibly m enormous, strange shape covered in blue mm, Christmas tree wrapping paper. That's right. And in there was a bike, wasn't there? There were two. Ralph got one as well, didn't he? Ralph got one as well, yeah. And it was very, it was wonderful. And it was a bike that, I didn't find out this until later, I think, that it was a bike that what it did was it came with a kind of, sound box on it, didn't it? Or something like that made funny noises, do you remember? Mm. It was one of those, I don't know if people know what I'm talking about, but basically it was like, you could buy these sound boxes in the in the 90s, or that, that, that when you pressed a button, it played like a fight, where like, and then it played, <laughs> and then it played the next stupid sound. It had like 10 that's silly right. sounds, and yeah, it went right. through them on a loop. Mm. Mm. And I didn't realise, but I think you'd, you'd attached those, hadn't you? Yeah, so, you'd, yes, you'd, you'd the, them so I yeah. thought, of course, when I was a kid, that that was part of the bike. I thought, and I always thought, up to for a long time afterwards, that you bought this amazing bike that <laughs> came with the sound effect thing attached to it, you know. But of course, uh, that was ludicrous, you know. Yes. You'd built it, and like I think you'd have to solder it all together and stuff, hadn't you? As well, you had to, mm -hmm. you'd have to do a load of work to actually. Well, like, I'm not sure it all up. a load of work. No, I well, I think it, it sort of it broke at one point, and you sort of soldered it back on together. I seem to remember that. Anyway, that's why I remember. So I think it was a. It's very memorable. Yes, it was nice. Me. That was a, quite a surprise, yeah. Yeah. They always took a lot of lot of troll to sort of hide them from you. Oh man, yeah. That was good. Question for Alan, what did you do for a job? What do you do now? Oh well I'm retired. Uh-huh. No. So uh, no I, way. uh what did I do as a job? I trained as an accountant and then uh, subsequently moved into uh, teaching. Spent uh, some years at a college. Uh, I retired from that and then ran my own business. 
which I suppose I stopped doing fairly recently. Yeah. You can't help still do bits, though, can you? A little bit, now yeah. and again. I think you enjoy it. Did you see oh. your son in the bee costume? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yes. Oh, very, man, very, I didn't realize, it was really good. I didn't realise you were a fan of my work, Dad. I am. Goodness me. Hmm. Well, I guess you can't help see that. It's all over the place, isn't it? Um, thank you. This is very kind. Uh, lots of lovely messages. Uh, how, blah, blah, blah. Fantastic stream, trying to get too tired, that's all right. America's from Norway, from Sunbun. Kekoa Tate, Kekoa Tate says, what did you think of the movie Interstellar? I watched the movie Interstellar, I thought it was good. No, I haven't seen it. No. No, what movie was the last movie you saw? Last film? Last film you saw. Oh, last film I saw, what, at the cinema or on television? Wherever, Dad, wherever. Well, the last film I saw on the television was Apollo 13. Right, with Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, what, yeah. did, you, what did you think of it? Uh, excellent film. It is an excellent film mm. indeed, yes. Very, very good film. I enjoyed that one too when I saw it about seven years ago. Um. <laughs> um. Do you have any interesting facts, Dad? Do you have any interesting facts to tell me that you've learned at all? Uh, your, any, of your, any of your nature talks or anything interesting at Rotary? Interesting fact? Yeah, an interesting fact. Got a fact for me? Fact. Uh, Give me a fact. A fact. Maybe about animals or about, about something else? No, I think um, perhaps I ought to give some facts about uh, N. Polio now. No. Well, that's right. We talked about it loads. Um, <laughs> what about advice? Do you have any advice for, for, for the young people watching who are going through school and stuff today and, or, or, or other people watching who might you know, be at home watching this? What advice do you have for young people? Advice for young people? Mm, difficult, uh, really. Uh, young people have got lots of people giving them advice, but I think uh, the important thing to remember is that the real, real life... Working is quite different to school or college or university. Real life demands your attention, your commitment. Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere. Oh, wise words, Dad. Thank you very much. You pretty much get through school doing bugger all, but real life isn't that, is it? Whew! Lots of good questions. What's your fondest memory of me? Fondest memory of you? Yeah, what's your fondest memory of me? When was I the cutest? <laughs> I think when you dyed your hair blonde. Oh, good and, God. And uh, for the charity event at the school that you were at when you were raising money. Yeah. And I think you did a really good job then. I dyed it blonde. And I had it, it was quite long was when long. I first dyed it blonde. Yeah, yeah. I didn't dye, I bleached the whole thing. <laughs> and I looked weird. Didn't <laughs> I look weird? Because I was supposed to be M&M. &M, yes. But yes. I didn't have any way to cut it all off. Mm. So what I, was, what, what I was doing, I dyed it all blonde and then I went to school with long, crazy Blum. blonde hair. That's right. And then I went to the hairdressers after school, mm -hmm. had it all shaved off to be M&M &M, and I wore dungarees. <laughs> to the school the next day. Oh, uh, yeah, I thought you did very well then. That was good, that was. That was for mm. the charity auction, so we were dressed like yeah. a bunch of rappers. Mm. And I learned an, like an Eminem song and I rapped it, didn't I? God, I can barely remember that. Well, we made up a song. We made up a rap song about Pokemon cards. Did you? I yeah, because well, I that. thing is, uh, it was at the time when I was a bit too old for Pokemon cards, but everyone in the lower years was obsessed with them. Right. And so we were like, Pokemon cards ain't worth your fuss. Give us your money, because you're out of, out of luck. But right about now, I don't really give a butcher's mm -hmm. or whatever. It was it was one of those raps that mm. didn't quite rhyme. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whatever. Yeah, it was, good to, it was good. I remember doing that. Oh, give us your money. Uh, God, I have to be careful. 
So what was it you didn't watch the other... I was talking to you earlier. You couldn't watch it because there was too much swearing. What was it? Was it, was it The Wire or something? You watched one episode... Oh, uh, yes, I thought The Wire. It. Too the much language swearing. language was very often. Terrible, often-ton. terrible. Mm. That is not the sort of language that one normally uses. No. No. In conversation. You enjoyed watching Fargo, though, didn't you? Oh, Fargo, I thought was... Uh, it's a good TV series. I recommend very it. Very good. Have you, have you got to watch Game of Thrones? Sorry, what? Have you watched Game of Thrones, or are you going to watch that? No, I haven't watched that. Um, okay. I haven't really followed it at all. I need to get you a DVD with that or something on. Um, have you, have you, by the way, watched The Hunger Games? The Hunger Games, yeah. The, there's a couple of them, isn't there? No, there's, there's three, actually, now. Is there? We've only, we've only seen the first one, but we would like to certainly see the second and the third. Did you like it, then? Oh, I thought it was... Yeah. You liked it? I did. What did you like about it? Well, it was it was <laughs> it was a good story in as much that uh, the 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 girl was uh, was very clever. She had some help, of course, but it's good to see it, the heroine being successful. Oh my gosh, that's that's really cool. I didn't realise that you were sort of. I didn't think you would be in touch with things like like kind of games. No, Dad. I sort of assume oh. that you live in a kind of Cuckoo strange now. Victorian. <laughs> <laughs> sort of setting where you listen to jazz music and stuff, but no. Yes, no, I, I, no, no I, I try to keep in touch, but although there are some of these things like this technology, which is a little bit beyond me. Are you going to make any videos and become part of the Oscast? Are you going to do any? Are you going to play any games? Asks Jake in skip. Um, do you play any games? No, only cards. Cards? What kind of cards? Fairly simple games. Your mum's much better than me at cards. What kind of, or bridge or stuff, or whist or what? Well, no, she plays bridge, I don't play bridge. What do you play? Oh, it's uh, knockout whist. You know, the simple things. We used to play with you on holiday. What's your favourite game? Like, or sport or whatever, to watch and play or do or follow? Well, I'm very s- saddened by the fact that I had to give up playing badminton. I used to enjoy badminton at the time, hurt my back. And uh, well, to play. I don't play now. Badminton's a bit like stress, stressful, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's a like lovely squash. game. You, you run around it's very fast, very. Mm, it is, I know that this is true. It's good. But I remember playing badminton in the garden. We used to. Yeah, we did. We had this um, gardens. We had a sort of area of the garden that had a path running down it. It didn't quite run down the middle of the garden. Um, and then we, you, I remember you, sort of made holes in the path, in and we pathway. stuck these. Old bits of wood that you got That's from right. somewhere. Old bits of wood. It was a proper net. And it was a proper net, but the thing is, the <laughs> bits of wood were always just, they always sagged a bit. And so the net was always kind of like, mm. you know, it was always a very kind of U shaped net. That's and right. over, you know, we went through a lot of wood. But also when we played, I remember you were really kind of, if the hedge hadn't been trimmed on that side of the garden, and it was smaller anyway, you were at quite a disadvantage if you were on that side. Yes. And I remember more than once we had Uncle John or someone go into the hedge. That's you know, correct. Diving for a shot. <laughs> yeah. It was terrible. Yes. Whenever we played badminton, I remember there would always be the, all these bunch of old guys. It would be you and not not that you were that old back then, but you and Uncle John's older than you, isn't he? And a bunch of other people and and the gentleman from down the road. Yeah. And, Alan. Oh, and they would just you 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 would go. It would be mad. It would be like you were turned into some sort of competitive dance. It was, wasn't it? Dance. Yeah, it was very strange, that. And you would yeah. just t- throw yourselves around the garden. Very competitive. Yeah. Mm, mm. It became this crazy thing, didn't it? It did. It was good. Do you remember living back there? So we lived in a... Um, yes, we used to have a... Uh, if we had a lot of friends around, we'd have a knockout competition, wouldn't we? We lived in a, we lived in a bungalow. We had a... Um, do you remember the old well? We had a concreted over well didn't we so we wouldn't fall in there that's right but cats and stuff still fell in it that's right your, 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 your grandfather helped me to put the concrete top on yeah I remember that yeah we had a pond we had some raspberry pond. plants strawberries mm, we, had a, big garden. we had a bonfire occasionally some apple trees that I would always climb up throw mouldy apples around mm. Wow, well there you go. I think that was jolly good. Um, Let's see if this is actually finished. All right, well, I don't think we're going to get the iPad back, so I think our game of 80 days is over. That's a shame. Um, I was just getting into it. Were you? 
<laughs> well, it's been a pleasure to have, to have you here. Um, we'll go and get some food, shall we? And we'll go and have a break. I think I'm being told Strippin, Sam Strippin is live, and we'll be taking over the stream. So he'll be covering for the rest of the night. Okay. I think I've done enough for the last few days anyway. Mm. Um, maybe we will think about um, having you back on next year or something. Okay. <laughs> so thank you. It's been a real pleasure. Oh, so it's, been, uh, it's been most enjoyable. Thank I've, you uh, for enjoyed donating. enjoyed it very much. And I, I must say it, I'm delighted that uh, you have so many willing viewers who are prepared to donate towards these very good charities that you've organised this year. Thanks, Dan. All right. Peace, everyone. Love you all.